Free skies. Welcome to All Gen Gamers, a podcast for people in video games of all generations. Starring Pete Door, Happy Console Gamer, Gamester81, and Jason Heine. Alright guys, welcome back to another episode of All Gen Gamers. This is episode 24, and we are joined with Gamester81, John. What's up guys, what's going on? Johnny, the happy sick console gamer. What's up, Johnny? Yeah, yeah, I got, I got the goddamn flu uh, like Pete had, and I think we both got it from the whale. You know, that's what you get for looking at a whale's asshole. So, <laughs> 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 so yeah. I was like, I got this flu, so if I start coughing insanely, I'll just run out of the room. That will happen a bunch of times, I'm sure. And Jason Heine, the EMU review. Hallelujah. And we have a guest with us today who is from our forums, active member in our community, and that is Brolan1. Ben, what's up, Ben? Hello, everybody. Hey, Ben, it's good to have you on the show. Good to be here. Thanks for having me. Definitely, definitely. So, Ben, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, do you have a YouTube channel? I mean, I know you're, you're part of the forums here, um, mm-hmm. Peace Game Room Forum, so kind of elaborate, please. Yeah. At the moment, I don't have a YouTube channel, but I've actually started up a blog. Um, it's pretty much grassroots at the moment, just product reviews and things that I pretty much anything that strikes my fancy when it comes to reviewing. It's called The Consuminator. So the theconsuminator.blogspot.com. And I've just started up. I'm not really a prolific blogger, and I've considered having a YouTube channel at several different points, especially seeing how much fun the rest of you guys have with it. But my current kind of role in the gaming community is I'm a moderator on a Pete's Game Room forum. People on there know me as Broland1, and uh, some like me, some hate me, but... Uh, <laughs> well, why do people... Why would people- you oh you know what you block a couple douchebags and people hate your guts for it but you know what by and large it's a great experience and i know i've made friends with a lot of people on there some of them i've gotten to know on facebook some of them none of them i met in real life but you know people i've gotten to know kind of outside the confines of the forum and yeah that's pretty much where i come in i'm a moderator i'm on there constantly and uh, there's a lot of good people there's a lot of good people in the forums there really is yeah there are and, you know, and there are people from all different parts of the world, all different That's- walks of life. I mean, you know, when I see a lot of gaming forums nowadays, it's a lot of younger people who like to kind of sling insults back and forth. Trolls, yeah. trolling is allowed and it's rampant. I find with this forum in particular, there's a lot of people, you know, who are my age or above. You know, I'm 30 years yeah. old, so I'm av- older than a lot of gamers that you'd find online. But you have a nice little balance of people on there. And the discussion is usually very intelligent. You don't get a lot of the fanboy debates. You don't get a lot of the, you know, pointless back and forth bickering. Most of the users on there are very contributory. Most of them are very insightful. And, you know, I have a blast on there every day. In fact, <laughs> I usually check the forum before I even check my email. So. <laughs> You usually, <laughs> usually, you're right. You usually see that on a lot of other forums. It's always like, like console bashing, like a PS3 is better than 360. And it's like, what a pointless argument that is. I, I'm so happy that people are not doing that. The people on, on, on the, on our forums there are very respectful. It's, it's yeah, nice to are, see. Uh, yeah, they, they are for the most part. And it, it's funny because I still get people who kind of come at me or like, you know, well, which do you prefer? The Xbox, the PS3 or the Wii? And I'm like, I own all three. I don't have to have a preference. Exactly. That's, that's exactly. Right. I've been saying that for years. Years. It's yeah. like people always bitch about it. Dude, buy them all and shut up. Yeah, End you know of story. I, I have this long-standing theory about. Yeah, I might even say fanboys because that's almost offensive in a way. And you know, I'll say obsessive fans. You know, they're kind of limited by their choices. You know, they can only have an Xbox. They can only have a PS3. They can only have a Wii. So they feel inferior, and they have to go on forums and on mm-hmm. YouTube and kind of slander the competition because they don't want to admit that they have the weaker system, even though they're all great. I mean, exactly. If I, they all if, have if strengths I, and weaknesses. They all do right? their own thing. That's it. Yeah. They, they all do. And and I think anyone who purposely limits themselves to one system or you know they evangelize the ps3 over the xbox or vice versa they're really missing out because every system has great exclusives and honestly i find the debates are tiresome every time i watch like someone slinging back and forth you know your system sucks your system sucks it's like a hamster spinning in a wheel i'm just like totally pathetic so yeah yeah, that's when i see that on the forums usually you know myself and the other mods you know by the way hi guys if you're listening i know you are (laughs) um said i had to say hi share some of the love with the other forum members but when we see that kind of stuff we usually stand there right away so it's grown substantially since i started i mean there's like what 3200 members now something like that wow yeah there's a lot there's a lot of people on there and a lot of active ones and you know we just got to keep it you know safe and guarded well ben and the rest of the moderators we thank you for keeping our borders safe there in the forums you are very welcome sir yes (laughs) now ben you also have a 
extremely large CD collection, it seems. Oh, you saw my Facebook, eh? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's outside of video games. I'd say my passion when it comes to collecting is albums. I own about 4,000 CDs. Nice. Wow. And, like. Yep. And as the picture on my Facebook will attest, you saw that, Pete, it's all alphabetized, you know, by artist name or compilation title, chronologically by release date. Yes, I am that nerdy. Oh, wow, that's crazy. That's but, so much work. I, I, what's do you know Facebook? I have you on Facebook? Uh, ben? Yeah, Ben Roland, R-O-W-L-E-N-D. That's that's me. Yeah, have you added me? Yeah, I'm on yours as well, Jason. Okay, because I want to see that. Yeah, it's it's a pretty big collection, and I get the usual questions from people like, you know, why did you? Holy sell crap! <laughs> you oh saw John. Look at that. Hey, I see your GI Joe box set up there. Awesome, man. And yep. your Transformers box set. That's cool. Yep, right. you are not you're not seeing things. And then what else do I have up there? Uh, I have you can't see it, but it's the entire series of Batman, the animated series from the early 90s. Yeah. I had I had to get that when it came out on DVD. Wow. So, yeah, nice. so I've been collecting CDs for about 20 years now. So that's definitely wow. my passion outside video games. And, you know, it wouldn't trade it for anything. I like how you have a display, too. It's really well done. Nice. It's, it's really yeah. nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, do you, do you get into uh, records at all or just, just CDs? You know what? I really, really want to get into vinyl, but considering yeah. how much I spend on CDs right now and video games coupled into that, I think another format would probably bankrupt me. So uh-huh. I, I do plan to get back into vinyl one day. I do actually have some vinyl records. Like I have original Beatles recordings. I have original Rolling Stones recordings. I want to get a good record player and a good sound system. So that's something I'm eventually going to look into getting. And there's a lot of stores in Toronto, which is where I live, that sell vinyl really cheap. Well, whereabouts so, in Toronto do you live? I used to live in Toronto as well i live in the east end on uh, the danforth area okay geez i was a little kid when i lived there but i i lived in a place called georgetown i don't know if you've yep. heard of okay yep. I, lived, I lived there it was a little small place my we moved from england to there so but yeah mm. do you know the world's biggest bookstore yep that's on uh near young and dundas in toronto i yeah. go there a lot actually my father used to manage that place when, when really? i was younger yeah, like years ago, type of thing. Wow. So, yeah, th- those are my memories from Toronto. But yeah, it's no, yeah, world, t- eh? Toronto is a great city. I love that city. Mm-hmm. It's good. Hey, um, you know, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go. Go ahead. Go ahead. I just had a question for you. I know with the music changing, going to more digital. What are your thoughts about maybe CDs eventually being kind of on the wayside? It's inevitable, um, yeah. but it's also very it's also very sad. I mean, I'm one of those people that I, I'm a very tactile kind of person. I like to have something I can hold in my hand and appreciate as well as, you know, listen to or play or watch. And I think, you know, especially when you break down kind of how music is, you know, you know, I don't know watered down when it's converted to MP3 versus the sound quality you get on a CD. It's a huge difference. And I've always been the belief that, you know, if, if you enjoy something and you're passionate about it, it's worth investing in. So yeah. I think it's sad. I mean, people are have stopped buying CDs. I mean, a lot of stores have closed down. A lot of places like HMV, which is kind of the big, you know, retailer in Toronto that used to carry CDs, they're moving towards DVDs and video games. The CDs are totally going out. But I think I think it's sad because, you know, I remember as a kid, you know, I'd go to the record store, I'd pick out what albums I want, take them home, open them, listen to them. You know, it, for me, that's kind of the the nostalgia factor to it. And that's why I love having CDs. I mean, you know, for me, it's like, you know, owning a painting on your wall versus, you know, a little little digital picture on your computer. It's not the same. I don't know. Maybe that's just me, but I find there's a lot of people like me out there who do, you know, they still believe in getting the albums and getting the artwork and just appreciate Well, you, you're you from my generation too. You're like, you, it was so exciting when CDs came out. You remember that? Exactly. I remember, you yeah. know, the day, the day the album for like, say, Pearl Jam or Nirvana or, yeah, it was you know, huge chili peppers i mean i used to line up to get those albums and it was it was a different time i think nowadays yeah. people are all about quick convenience getting it fast. expendable entertainment right it, yeah. expendable entertainment and it, a lot of music is marketed like that because you know I'm, yeah. I'm not a snob like there's a lot of great music out there now but i think the record companies are marketing it as you know one-time listen disposable shit you know they're not really putting investments into promoting it as something you can appreciate for years to come so you, you know. can say back back then uh, ben that when you bought a cd it was like a, a major event and that it you was, would listen to that cd and get as much of your money's worth out of it as you could exactly well you could say the same thing about video games too i mean you as kid, back then too yeah absolutely. yeah as, as a kid you get one game a year or a game on your birthday or a game at christmas and that makes your whole year right there yeah. same with an album you know you don't have all the money to go out and buy whatever you want so you're selective and you get the most enjoyment out of it as an adult i find i can just get what i want when i want so that's why i have a lot of you know albums i don't listen to right away or games i don't play for months after i get them you know, I know. 
Yeah, and like albums now- nowadays, they're just you can pick them up for pennies. But you know, I remember back in the day when it was thriving before this. You know, I guess I'll call it MP3 generation. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, these the albums were expensive. I remember going to Tower Records with my dad like all the time, and we would we would buy CDs together, and mm-hmm. the ones that were new were on sale for twelve ninety nine. You know what I mean, or thirteen ninety nine. But then the ones that weren't new releases, they were twenty bucks, eighteen yeah. bucks. You know, this was an investment. You know, it was easy to drop a hundred bucks in there. What was really bad too is that I loved listening to movie soundtracks, and if you wanted like a really rare movie soundtrack, you were paying like thirty, forty bucks. Easy, honestly. Mm-hmm. You'd have the special. Or- you'd have the special ordered from HMV. They wouldn't even yep. have it in the store. Hmm. Yeah, get Alien One the soundtrack and stuff like that. Yeah, but I mean, we are moving towards a download culture. I mean, we have been progressively for the past few years, and you know, I'm probably just the one of the guys swimming against the tide, but. You know, it's going to come to the point where it's going to be all digital. I mean, I can see, oh, I can't, I can't see another physical format coming in. I mean, fortunately, gamers, I don't see the the video game, you know, the physical copies fading out nearly as fast. I no. think, you know, not nearly as fast, but it's it's inevitable, really. I mean, you know, it, it, soon, it, it, it has it has strengths, it has downsides, but at the same time, I mean, you know, people like us who grew up at a certain time, we're always going to gravitate back to what we grew up with, and that was, you know, the physical copies, you know, the the artwork and all that good stuff. So, yeah, it's sad. But you know, <laughs> can't be an army of one. You know, right, That's right, right. Cool. Mm-hmm. So, what is the topic for today? I, I got this cold, but I think I'm I'm doing okay. Um, what are we going to talk about? Are we going to talk about the games that we enjoyed in 2010? I think that that's a good. good sounds choice. like a plan. Boy, there was a lot of them. Yeah, there was a lot of games. I jeez. I wonder if we can get a list going so we can. Like, I don't want to forget anything because there was so much good stuff. There's so much good stuff. It was a pretty banner year for me as well. So how about you, Ben? Pick a game, and we'll see if any of us played it. Uh, the Sly Collection on the PlayStation 3. I did not. I haven't no. played it either. For shame. No, that's. I got it as a Christmas gift, and it was probably the last game I got in 2010, but I would definitely say it's the one that I've enjoyed the most, just for nostalgia and just fun factor, you know? I was going to say, I've only played the original Sly. I haven't played Sly 2 or 3, and I never made it far into Sly 1, so this would definitely be a worthwhile purchase, I'd assume. It's a- it's a really good value, and I love how Sony's kind of going the way of Nintendo and re-releasing a lot of their older titles, um, like they did with God of War and what they did with the Sly Cooper collection. I mean, I only played the second one on the PlayStation 2, and it was one of my favorite platformers on it. So this is a good opportunity to kind of get all three of them together and kind of see the series. I know there's a fourth one that's supposed to be coming out. Don't know if that'll be 2011, but fingers crossed. Oh, yeah, that's right. They revealed that in the trailer in the in this one, right? Mm-hmm. It's or on the kind of like reveal. Yeah, it's on the disc. I haven't gotten to it yet, but I think it's just a preview for it. It's kind of like a teaser trailer, but there will be another Sly Cooper. So fans of that will definitely want to keep their eyes open. But for the time being, the three games on the Sly collection has pretty much been eating up all my time. I'm just looking at the list here. There was so much stuff. Like, this a game that's jumping out for me right now is Bayonetta. Mm-hmm. That game Brilliant. on Jet? Yeah. Really underappreciated game. That, that game was amazing. I, I feel so bad. That it didn't do as well as it should have. I really, that one really, really sucks. Well, it came it out at the beginning. It came out at the beginning of the year, so I think a lot of games just kind of swept it under the rug a little bit. But I, I agree, it was a brilliant game. Yeah, that's a really good one. Oh, I'm so it. over the top, but it was so over the top good in a good way. You know, mm-hmm. most games can't pull that off, but they had the characters to to go along with it. Oh, here, here's another one. One of the um, highly rated game of uh, 2010 that I haven't played. You guys are all going to hang me. And that was Heavy Rain. Yeah, I was going to mention that, dude. Mm-hmm. Heavy yeah. Rain. That's yeah. Good. That's one. Kind of, kind of a shorter game, but I, I really enjoyed it. Almost watched like watching a movie. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, I remember watching you do a live stream of that. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. I saw that too, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a really good. Well, well done. Uh, the music's great. I mean, the graphics are good. I really enjoyed it. The story was good. So I'm kind of, it's interesting. It's on the move now, too. We can get on the move. Mm-hmm. So it'd be kind of interesting to play on the move. God of War three stands out to me. Mm-hmm. Did you finish that game? Did you finish that game, John? But not yet. I'm almost done. Almost done. Yeah. So I, I just started it last week. I love it. It's cool. I should have bought it when it was on sale at like Gamefly for 18 bucks or whatever the hell it was. Yeah. You can, you can get it pretty cheap now, actually. I remember I bought it the first day and I think I beat it the first weekend. It was addictive. Like the first two, actually. Well, but, um, Johnny and I love short games, so we'll take. Mm-hmm. We were talking. We were talking about that, and uh, it, it's funny. The older you get, the, the 
I kind of like short, easy games. Not easy that I just blast through and I don't have to do anything or the game plays itself, but I like a game that's about 9 to 12 hours. That's ideal for mm-hmm. me. Like a Metal Gear game. Mm-hmm. Metal Gear games have always been the right length for me. Just as I've had kind of, okay, I've had my fun, it's over. It's like, perfect. Mm-hmm. Nice. Mm-hmm. And I get to finish the game, too, which is always a big thing. But, oh, God, look at this list. Are you, you, I sent you guys that list, right? Yeah. Holy yeah, crap, yeah, Mag. I totally forgot that Mag came out this year. God damn. Mm-hmm. So many games that I thought came out last year didn't even realize they came out this year. Mass Effect Two, that was a great yeah. game. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people have actually been giving that game of the year. I I don't know if it deserves game of the year, but I think it was an excellent game. Game of the year, I don't know, but but I'm surprised Jason hasn't said Battlefield Company Two. I'm waiting for that. No one's, <laughs> at, no one's asked. No one's asked two. me yet, so I'm waiting. <laughs> well, how about you, Jason? What are you? What games do you like? You like in 2010? Oh, you guys, you guys. <laughs> Battlefield Bad Company 2. Oh, there we go. No, but really, how can we forget Goldeneye? Yeah. Donkey Kong yeah. Country Returns? Jeez. Too many. Well, those came out like just recently, too. Just those are kind of fresh in our mind. Super oh. Street Fighter 4? Yeah. Wow. That's, uh, I'm, I'm going through the list here. I can't believe how much came out. Have any of you played Darksiders by any chance? Uh uh-uh. I played the demo. I hear really good things about it, but I have not personally played it. It came out around the same time as Bayonetta, and I remember buying both of them together, and I only just started playing Darksiders right now, and whew, it's actually a really good hack and slash. A lot of people didn't like it because, I don't know, I guess it was derivative of, I don't know, Dante's Inferno and maybe other higher profile games, but for a hack and slash game, it's definitely one of the best that I've played, so that's a very high recommendation for me. A lot of people are comparing it to Zelda. Do you see the That's right, too, yeah. In terms of the environmental puzzles, yes, but I find that it's more combat heavy. I find with Zelda, I remember there was a lot more puzzles, a lot more traversing. In Darksiders, it's just pretty much slash the hell out of things, but that's a strength in this kind of a game. But it's, it's more in the latter part of the game that it starts to feel more like Zelda. In the beginning, it reminded me a lot of Dante's Inferno, which is definitely not a bad thing. I love that. That's another good release this year. You, do you recommend it? What would you give it? Like, like I hate to say, put you on the spot. From what you played right now, would you say it's like a, a 7 out of 10? Or it's like a must-play game? I would probably say it's about a 7.5 to an 8. I mean, if you yeah. like hack and slash games, and I definitely do. I mean, I'm a big fan of like the Devil May Cry. I love the God of War games. You'll feel right yeah. at home if you're playing Darksiders. If you're looking for something new and innovative, it might be you know a couple points lower. But definitely recommended from people who love those kind of games. Oh, God. Here's, here's another one I'm seeing here. And uh, who who picked this one up in uh, 2010? Final Fantasy 13. Me, right? Yes. Love it. I don't. I don't care. All you haters can hate. I love Final Fantasy 13. You finished it, didn't you, Peyton? I am like great right at the end, and because there's what 13 chapters, I think something like that. Well, let's just say there's 13 chapters. I'm on like chapter 12, so I'm like right there. Wow. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't picked it up yet, man. I mean to. Is that what you recommend it? I've heard mixed things. I've heard it's very linear. I heard it's it's very mixed. But here's the thing: I've said it. Um, you have to you have to go into this game, and you have to like the characters in the story. If you don't like the characters in the story, you have to like the battle system. If you don't like either of those, you're not going to like the game. Because other than that, there really isn't anything that really carries it forward. Because yes, it's very linear. It takes about 20 hours before the game opens up a little bit and gives you a little more freedom. Uh, 20 hours before you can even select who's in your party. Prior to that, the game selects who's in your party. And sometimes you only have two team members. But once you get to that point, um, even before then, I really enjoyed it. Because I really like the character development and just the environments and, and the, the way the story was going. I found it really interesting. Um, just a tip, though. Make sure anytime the game gives you a chance to check your your like log, where it keeps track of what characters or what and what locations or what and what term means this or that, make sure you read it because it gets very complex. And you'll if you lose track of like what Lassi and Falsi and all that stuff is, you're not going to yeah. enjoy the game. Mm-hmm. That was- I, I was I was lucky enough that I love the battle system. I love the graphics. I love the music. I love the characters and the story. It wasn't my favorite favorite Final Fantasy, but I thought what I played was good. But I kind of nope. just let it go. I, I was like, you know, I just I don't know. It didn't mm-hmm. do it for me. I didn't hate part. it, but I didn't it didn't do it for me. You could probably get it for fairly cheap now, right? Oh yeah, it's been out for for a minute. Twenty bucks probably if you get it used. Yeah. Huh. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. for one point, yeah. I don't remember where I heard it, but one point someone brought up, and it was a good point. Um, with Final Fantasy 12, they, you know, 
overall, that game was actually really highly praised. Quite a few people liked it. The review critics and all them liked it. And they seem to have a pretty good system down for the, you know, and I know some people absolutely hate that game, but I thought it was a good game. You know, why would they get down all that great work, the gameplay, and then go and change it drastically in 13? They took a little bit of too much of a risk. And I don't really but, think... But they do that with every Final Fantasy, though. Every Final Fantasy, they do different stuff. It's always like a different game completely. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, just, it's its own game, uh, you know, uh, type of thing. Because there's things in Final Fantasy, I'm like, oh, you know, I, I love this. And then in the next Final Fantasy, it's not there at all. I'm like, oh, damn. They always change it up. And they're very experimental with Final Fantasy. Eh? It's really interesting how much they do experiment and take risks. And sometimes it can be good, sometimes not so good. Well, hopefully what they've learned... Go ahead, Ben. Oh, it's one of the strengths of the series, really, because no two games are alike. And that's what I've really liked about the Final Fantasy series. Part 13 was maybe a little bit iffy for me. And I like you, Johnny, I kind of gave up on it after a couple of hours, just because for me, at least the battle system, I found it very hard to warm to that with the whole paradigms and assigning these abilities. It It was different. It was interesting. But yeah, I did about 20 hours and I'm like, I'm out. Mm -hmm. It was kind of like me with Final Fantasy 12. I did 25 hours. I'm like, I'm out. I knew that some people would love the games, but it wasn't for me. It's like one of those things, as you're saying, right? Yeah. Mm. Oh, we're bringing John back in. We lost him. Okay, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> Sorry, I was gonna. I was running off and getting my copy of Final Fantasy 13. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't wait to get it. I just had to leave the podcast and run and get it. You know how it goes. You had to shut the computer totally down. I did. I did. A <laughs> couple of games, you know, that I, I really wish I did play. And maybe some of you guys have played them. Um, Infinite Space on the DS. I really want to play that game. I passed that one up. Um, yeah, it, it looked interesting, but it looked a little too complex once I really looked into it. It yeah. looked like one of those games where, yeah, you have to spend a long time to get into it. That's what it looked like to me. Mm. I still got to pick that up. And Red Steel 2. That's another one. Because Red Steel 1, I, I know, wasn't the greatest game. But I heard good things about Red Steel 2. I think I watched a couple of reviews on YouTube and people were saying great things about it. And I, I didn't pick that up either. I just bought it yesterday. Oh, did you? (laughs) Yeah, it was on sale for 20 bucks with the Wii Motion Plus attachments, so I couldn't pass it up. I did. I also heard really good things about that. Have you played it? No, I just got it yesterday. I'm already, um, it's on my pile. If you're, if I'm, I guess we're all alike in the sense, you know, we have a pile yes. of games that we're waiting to get around to. Oh, yeah. And pretty much every Wii title, the, the must have Wii titles like uh, Donkey Kong, Red Steel, Dead Space Extraction, those are like next on my list. But Red Steel, especially because I really like the gameplay videos. You know, I played the first one. I mean, I got it at, at launch. Launch, yeah. And, uh, you know, I enjoyed it. Yeah, it, it's pretty glitchy and there's some problems here and there in it. But uh, I felt the same way. I uh, liked it. I, I really enjoyed it. I did. Mm-hmm. I, th- I thought the controls were, you know, really intuitive, and I liked the gameplay. I always remember that freaking clown level in the circus. Yes, just yes. freaks me out. Dude. I still have nightmares over that. that no, level. I, I totally, every time I bring up Red Steel, I always mention that like weird, trippy carnival level. Like that level is so freaking. It was weird. hard as hell too, man. I died a lot in there trying like, to get through. I it. think it's worth playing the game just to get to that level because I I have never played anything like that before. Now I don't want to hype it up to be like something crazy, but I'll just say that the game was enjoyable. Like you said, for a launch game on the Wii, it showed off. Look, all I'm gonna say about it is, look, I. I got it at launch. I paid retail for it, right? You can get it for probably pennies on the dollar right now. And it's worth that. I was I was happy I, I bought it. I'm still happy I paid retail. I thought it was a good game for that. So if you haven't already played that, check it out. But uh, that's one too. I have not gotten the second one. I'm just looking through the list. I saw it on there. I totally forgot about it. I feel feel bad about that. I'm going to have to pick it up. Oh, but ben, if Ben got that for 20 bucks with the, the Motion Plus, that's just awesome. Yeah, that's totally. a good deal. I think one of the reasons why they're doing that is I think aren't they combining the Wii Motion Plus with the Wii Remote in in all future games? Is that what they're going to be doing? Like they're going to combine it into one controller? They've already done that, yeah. Oh, they've already done that. Okay, I didn't know that either. Yeah, it came out with the 25th anniversary Wii. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. Huh. Mm -hmm. Huh. But now you can pick up the controllers. Like I, I have a blue one, and it has it built in too. Mm Hmm. I also have a pink one, (laughs) and it's built into that too. I'm sure you do. Very nice. So, so here, here's what I'm, it's, it's, it's standing out to me. I'm just going to mention it to get it out of the way for me, but I think my game, I actually, I think I know what my game of the year is for 2010. I actually think I know what it is. Spoilers. Drum roll. Spo- it is Dragon Quest nine Sentinels of the Story Skies. That is my game of the year. No big surprise. You know, and it's, and yeah, it, goes, it, was, it was only the only game you were playing for oh, seven months. months. <laughs> it, it felt like that. It really did. But, um, 
I really enjoyed it. I, I love the multiplayer aspect. I've said that so many times, and uh, I had so much good fun playing with my friends in that game. And uh, and it's not the most graphically amazing game of all time, but it's a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, that that's definitely my pick. There's a lot of other great games, though. I'm just not. I, I, it sucks. I always hate having to choose one. You know, you know, there's, there's so many other great games. Like, god damn, mm. if I go through this list right now, fuck. I can't sure. believe. Like, I'm noticing so many games that Christ. I, wait, like seriously, Sega and Sonic All Star Racing came out this year. Mm. That was at the beginning I, of the year, mm, right? Mm. God, man, making my top list is going to be harder than I thought. Hey, how about how about Mario Galaxy Two? You guys, I, I uh, know, I saw that there too. Yes, I'm, I'm surprised none of us have mentioned Red Dead Redemption. Of course. I tried so one. hard to get into it. Oh, yeah. you, just, you didn't get into it, Ben? You know, the whole thing with Red Dead Redemption, I mean, I see why people like it, but I think it's the same problem I had with Grand Theft Auto 4. It's just so much plotting, so much traveling, and the jobs really didn't click with me. I know a lot of people kind of have the same complaint with it, but it's just, I don't know, these open world games, they kind of give you burnout after a while, and I think Red Dead Redemption just didn't... I tried. Like, I really wanted to like it because it has all the ingredients of a game that I would love, but just for some reason, it just didn't, you know, didn't gel. Yeah, half half the game is traveling, going from point mm-hmm. A to point B. You know, so they always. Uh, I mean, I know you can take like taxes and stuff, whatever, different chariots, but still, it's a little excessive on the the traveling part aspect. Yeah. Of and some it. and some people love it for that reason. I mean, it's a beautiful game, and the open world yeah. is fantastic. But I mean, once the eye candy sheen kind of wears off, it's like, okay, I just want to progress the story a little bit. I want to progress the story, and it's just for me, it just it took too long. Maybe I'm just getting impatient. I don't know, but I'm going to go mm-hmm. back to it because I think eventually it will click with me. I just have to give it time to kind of simmer. Right. right. Oh, I, I gotta say here, two two games came out this year that are um, definitely uh, two favorite games of mine uh, and, and Pete's, and that would be Front Mission Evolved and Final Fantasy fourteen. Those are <laughs> two games that we had a bit of high hopes for, and we were a little let down by them, unfortunately. I remember coming back from PAX going, Front Mission was the game of the show for me, and it turned out to be this not so hot. And uh, same for Final Fantasy XIV. Mm-hmm. Any any updates on that, Pete? Have you put any more time into it? <laughs> Not recently, no. <laughs> That's Johnny, over. Me- Johnny, remember at PAX how big that display for Final Fantasy was? Oh, yeah. Huge. Was Huge. Playing on the PS3 hardware. Right. They had PS3 controllers. It was it was happening. And now it's not happening. It's. But I remember saying to the guy, I said, I said when's, uh, when's this coming out for PS3? He's like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, wow, okay. We're showing a demo or something, and we don't know when. It's really being... glad you have it here, buddy. Yeah, I, he's like, I don't know. I was just like, oh, okay. Sure. Did you um? Did you pick up White Knight Chronicles, Johnny? I sure did. Did you ever? Did you ever see? Uh, you probably didn't see. I did a new game stuff episode, and I mentioned it. And I mentioned that I thought the game world was beautiful. I thought the music was awesome. I liked the character designs. I liked all that stuff. But it kept freezing on me. Oh, really? I don't and that. I did it. So what's so funny was. What was awesome, it kind of worked for the video when I was describing that it was frozen. I thought, man, it sucks that, you know, I'm only telling these guys that it's freezing. They're going to think it's my PS3 or something like that. But when I was capturing the footage, guess what it did? It froze. (laughs) I remember that now. I did. Do you remember that? And I went up to the TV and I said, look at this. It froze on me. It was so, I was so happy to have that. I actually had to drag the camera out again just to film that little bit. It was pretty funny, but I, I had such high hopes for, White Knight Chronicles, and uh, that was a bit of a disappointment. I'm- I hyped myself up really, really high for that. Me too, me too. Level five, it was by you know, it was basically Dark Cloud three, just without the uh-huh. title, almost with online. It was like it was like Fantasy Star meets uh-huh. Dark Cloud. Isn't part two coming out this year? Uh, I believe this year. Yeah, the yeah. thing part two is they're gonna bundle the first game with the second one. You actually have to finish the first game before they let you play the second. Shut. Ooh. Ah, are serious. you kidding? That's crazy. No. So don't delete your save files. <laughs> you are kidding me. <laughs> I, I'm totally sorry. I'm totally in shock. You're, they are making you play a broken game. And I'm saying broken in the sense that it freezes on you. It froze on me like three times. That's what was killing my love of it. I'm sitting there leveling up for a long time and it freezes. Yep, I read this months ago. They're bundling the first game with the second, and oh. because it's so, because the developer or something, the creator said he doesn't want you playing the second one without playing the story of the first. What? <laughs> that is, that is, I'm automatically not buying it now. <laughs> well, I, I would have actually bought it if they didn't make me do that. 
that's like saying we want that's like saying we want to fail with this game yeah that's a terrible yeah. marketing plan you have to buy the first one pretty much to buy the second. no they're giving you the second one they're giving you the first one when you buy the second game okay but still, I guess. So, somebody's not getting a reach around. Yeah, yeah, no shit. I want to play. I want to play the game that is fixed. Maybe they fixed it. Maybe they. I think they. It. I think they did say they were going to do some improvements to it. I could be wrong. It's been a while since I read this, but I think they did mention something about that. They're going to update the graphics. Something they're going to do. I forget. Huh. Mm, wow, that's, that's a shock. Pretty, that's pretty whacked. Here's one for you guys. Endless Ocean Two. Mm. Oh, I, oh, yeah. I know the whale would love that. This one is favorite game. Game where's, of the a, where's a whale anyway? Speaking of which, you haven't heard him in the past two episodes, I believe. No, no, I get the P had the flu from him, then I had the flu from him. That's and right, he's he still just, in transit somewhere. Where the hell? Yeah, is he? well, I think I think Jason was going to go check the um, is it what was he the, the pool or something? No, you guys, right? look, I went out there, okay, wasn't in the pool, but I noticed that my water in the pool is at least four inches lower, huh? Mm. So, what so does that could- mean? The hell does that mean? It never it, goes down that low. Never. What the hell does that mean? I think I think he's been in there. He's been in uh, there. I think oh, so. So 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 therefore it's official the whale is at your place. Well, I don't have like I don't have physical confirmation. No, I think I think Jay, I think Jason's kinda you know, he's trying to pull one over on us. I think I, I definitely think is, so. I think something's going on between the two of them. Yeah. Why yeah. you guys always gotta jump to conclusions? Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> Tell me what to do. <laughs> we'll come back to that one. That's hey, mysterious. gamester. I'm gonna put you Yo. on the spot. Okay. Uh oh. We heard Johnny's game of the year. Okay. So, gamester, what is your game of the year, 2010? I'd probably say Red Dead Redemption. Although I, I will be, I'll say this: I'm really digging Scott Pilgrim versus the World. The game. That's good. Have you guys? Have you guys? Did you get past oh. the first level? <laughs> Dude, I did. I got the past the first level. I'm, I'm like halfway through it, actually. But so far, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Where is uh, the end of the level, you guys? Because I played for like 30 minutes and like never ended. It's, it's never way ends. too long. That It's, it's way, way too long, those levels. So I don't it's think so I even fr- passed it. Yeah. But the soundtrack's great. It's a very old school beat-em-up uh, style. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a pretty cool game. I, I really dig it. Yeah, I like it, too. I like yeah. it. It's old I just school. played the demo. Can you play online in the demo? Probably not. <laughs> you can't play online at no. all. No, you can't play online at all. Isn't think. it a Xbox no, Live? No, multiplayer. You can play four player. I think you can play. Oh no, it's, it's it's only in the same room. Oh really? Not online. I thought it was Xbox Live. No. Oh. Well, that's what's sad about him. Yeah. The crowd goes ah. Oh. Unless I'm completely smoking drugs or something. But well, um, now I think I you to, are. But now I need to look it up, you guys. God damn. Okay, look it up. I I I'm thinking. No, there's I'm no thinking. online multiplayer for that. Game. There we go. Yeah, all right, awesome. the verdict is in. Yeah. Door has said it, so therefore it's true. <laughs> it has spoken. Uh, well, that would have that would have been awesome if it was. No, because that's so, why I haven't bought that game. Because yeah. so that drops I'm, that drops a little bit lower on my list, but still, it's a great game. Nevertheless, check it out for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Oh, okay. It was, let's just put it back to you, Jason. Not putting you on the spot, but what is your favorite game of the year? <laughs> Don't tell me what to do. All right, it's a toss up. <laughs> Don't laugh. I already know that's answer. Well, yeah, you I guys mean, don't know shit. Between Battlefield Bank Company Two and Battlefield Bank Company no, Two no, Gold Edition. <laughs> shut up! Shut up! Shut the up! Gold up. Edition. Door. You like, don't no, know. He's gonna say Golden Eye. No, he's gonna say Rock of the Dead. You know he's gonna say Rock of the Dead. Say I like Eye. the guesses. I like the guesses. Any more? <laughs> Any more bullshit coming my way? Hydra it's Thunder. Golden Eye. It's gonna be Golden Eye for sure. Yeah. Hydra like, Thunder. Wasn't there had been a Barbie game released last year, right? I know you you, you like the Barbie games. Yeah. It's a toss up here. He's gonna say Donkey Kong. He's gonna say Donkey Kong again. Yeah. Either Lego Harry Potter or Toy Story Three: The Game. Lego. <laughs> yeah, fuck you all now. <laughs> what is your answer? What is your final answer? It's Bad Company Two. Of course it is. Of course it, it is. is. But you know what? There were so many. There were so many good ones this year. I really like Hydro Thunder. Holy Hydro Thunder. moly! Oh, yeah. Hydro. Thunder. I'm freaking addicted to that on Xbox yeah. Live. Pete was streaming that the other day, and the three of us were playing Johnny, and I was I was doing shitty, so shitty. <laughs> I, just, I, was, I do shitty at streaming, or it doesn't matter. I always do shitty at that game. No, but seriously, like, like attacking gamester. <laughs> people were like ripping me to shreds, dude. On the apparently, I wasn't reading the comments because I was I was focused on the game because I was doing so shitty. But it was terrible, man. Terrible. 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 It's funny. It's funny. We were talking to Pete the other day about this. Is that I was playing Splatterhouse the other day, the the new one. 
Yeah. And I was thinking about like, you know, you guys streaming games online and people watching and stuff like that. And I thought, I am never doing that because people are going to be going, this guy sucks. The happy console game is a correct because I was playing Splatterhouse and I was having I was having some hard times in some it's levels. Tough game. I heard it's tough. Mm-hmm. It's, it's very it's, hard. Yeah. I heard some of the boss battles are some some of the stuff is crazy. And I thought if I was streaming this, all these kids would be going, "He's a loser. He sucks. He, this guy does no video games from an asshole." <laughs> no, like, I, I was just, I'd be re- I was redoing the same level for like forty minutes. It was ridiculous. You remind me, I was playing Castlevania Lords of Shadow yesterday online, streaming it for people, and I was stuck on the second Titan battle, the one that's like a direct ripoff of Shadow of the Colossus, like unbelievable. But I was on there for about an hour, constantly getting killed by this freaking thing, and I was going insane. And people must have been like, man, he sucks at this. But thankfully, there were some people in the chat room that had played the game before and knew how much of a pain in the ass that battle was. Um, huh. But it was just so bad because the, the platforming in that game and the mechanics of that battle were just terrible. It, it really wasn't about skill. It was about luck and learning which way you have yeah. to jump to avoid mm-hmm. the attacks. And Still a great game, though. I've been playing it. Gorgeous game. Unbelievably yeah. good looking. I bought it day one, and my reaction's pretty much the same. I've tried... I mean, it's a good looking game, and it's probably the best looking 3D Castlevania, but at the same time, ugh, it's the platforming is trial and error. The boss battles are trial and error, and oh, that sucks. I pretty much just and the thing is, I bought it the same day as Enslaved because they both came out the same day. Going from the platforming in Castlevania to Enslaved, it was like night and day. So it's very hard for me to go back to it. Though I, I think I will because I mean it. It has been no definitely go back to it. It's a good game. Yeah. It's unfortunate that some of the boss battles are not that great. Some of them are really just downright, you know, they are challenging and it's based on skill. But some of them are a lot of luck of the draw kind of stuff. The Try puzzles, and yeah, the the puzzles are just killer though. I remember that first one where you had to spin around those um those stone circles to rescue that girl and I uh, I had to go to a YouTube walkthrough to get through that. It was just so oh. frustrating. Other than that though, I think the gameplay, the standard gameplay in it is really I like it. I go into it. I'm not thinking it's a Castlevania game. Honestly, I'm just looking at it as a great 3D adventure game, and that's mm. what I'm getting out of it. Mm. So, okay, we're gonna go to Ben. Mm. I'm gonna put you on the spot right away, and I'm gonna give you a chance to think. What is your game of the year? I would say Alan Wake. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, good that's interesting. It's an interesting choice, and I know a lot of people didn't like it, but I grew up on Resident Evil games, and the one thing I always hated about them was the controls. You know, you can't run and shoot at the same time, and ammo shortages. If the if the Resident Evil games controlled like Alan Wake, it would be perfect. Like, that's the thing. It was atmospheric, it was a really good story, and I just got sucked into it. I still haven't played the downloadable content, but I would definitely say Alan Wake is probably my front choice. That or Fable 3. I mean, both games I loved and played incessantly, so... I, I got a question about Alan Wake. Uh, did it do really well? Do we know? It or was it kind of like... No, I, I didn't think it did. Which is it, kind of it, didn't, it, didn't, it didn't sell very well, and I think it was, it was a high repay... Put it this way. It was highly priced. It was a full retail price game, and it only had like eight hours of gameplay, which scares off a lot of people. Ooh, I'm in. <laughs> yeah. No, there you go. Johnny, there you go. There's there your There you answer. go. My game. No, but at game stores, even the second week, they were starting to offer them at reduced prices because no one was really buying it because they heard it was short. They heard there wasn't a lot of replay value once you discover all the secrets. And, it's too bad. You know, uh. But it, it's still a great game. I mean, anyone looking for good atmosphere and kind of a almost a Twin Peaks kind of setting, Alan Wake is definitely the game to go well, for. Well, yeah, I heard they had a whole bunch of these planned, like like three more games and all this. Maybe a couple more games. <laughs> was. And I wonder if we'll see them now. <laughs> Probably. I mean, the game did well enough, I think, to justify at least some DLC. So I yeah. can definitely see other. I can definitely see other games coming in the future. At least I hope, because I loved Alan Wake. So you know, odd maybe an odd choice for game of the year, considering you know everyone was all about Call of Duty and uh, yeah. any other big name title. But I don't know. That's the one I definitely got the most enjoyment out of. Nice. I thought the flashlight was kind of unique. The way you could use a flashlight, and it was interesting. It really makes it tense because yeah. you'll often find yourself in situations where you're surrounded by enemies and you're low on bullets and your flashlight battery keeps dying on you. So definitely some of the most intense battles I've experienced in any Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. Cool. Wait, Gamester, did you say flashlight or flashlight? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Flash, flashlight. Oh, I'm just curious. I'm just curious. All right, cool. Flashlight. Cool. cool. You actually, yeah, you actually flash them too. You know, you can, just making you know. sure. For the listeners not aware, if you want to know what a fleshlight is, Google it. <laughs> oh, God, don't tell them to do that. Now I'm really busted. <laughs> hey, HOP, are you going to say what you get? Like, I'm not putting you in the spot. If you can you can save it to you for your show. That's fine. Um, yeah, because I do want to make a video, but I'll, don't be worry about totally, it. Don't worry. I'll be totally honest. I have not even thought 
like what would be my number one yet like it's there's so many games out there that it's going to really take me a long time to sit down and figure out what would be the number one now the biggest thing that's going to surprise a lot of people is that my like when i do make my list a lot of the high profile games that came out this year are not going to be on there okay i can tell you one thing uh Mass Effect 2, not going to be on there because I didn't play it. uh, Bioshock 2, not going to be on there. I didn't play it. Alan Wake, not going to be on there. Uh, Red Dead Redemption, not going to be on there because I have not played that game enough to judge it properly. Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, not going to be on there because, well, I've only played the online and I don't think it's fair that I judge the single player based on not having played the previous two. Um, So yeah, all those games are not going to be on there. So there's going to be a lot of, I guess you could say... Uh, Can I take a guess? Go ahead, yeah. I'm gonna th- I'm gonna say it's probably NHL 2011. <laughs> gotta be, <laughs> yeah. Damn it, it's gotta no, be. But I, I, there, yeah. There's just a lot of games that I, I've got to think about. I, I have an idea of what some of them might be, but not a definitive answer. Here's here's another game that none of us played this year. I may stand correct. Please correct me if I'm wrong. That got a lot of really big hype. Um, people love it. I we I have I've not gotten it. I okay. Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker. Did any of us get that game? Crickets. I bought I it. Heard. I still haven't played it. Oh, okay. You at least you at least you took the plunge. I didn't. Mm-hmm. I was just like, oh, it's on the PSP. I had that kind of uh, thought process to it. <laughs> that again. Yeah, that again. It's like, but that's not fair. I because I hear it's really good. So. That's another it's one. supposed to be. It's, it's also supposed to be one of the most complex in the whole series in terms of like menus and assigning things and just kind of getting through it. Uh, that's kind of what scares me to start it when I have so Ooh, many yeah. other games on the go. But I mean, I bought it pretty much, I don't know, maybe launch day or maybe the first week of launch. And it, it, again, I had great intentions of playing it, but I still haven't. So maybe 2011 is where I have to clear the backlog before I get anything new. Did, did anyone mention Halo Reach yet? No, not uh, yet. I, yeah, I can actually say I finished that game two days ago. I, I really enjoyed it. How was it? It was good. It's um, what can I say? It's another Halo game, but it's really good. If you like Halo, you'll like it. If you don't like Halo, you're not gonna like it. It's really that simple for people out there. Do you people, play multiplayer people, online? I, I have not done that. I because the reason why I don't do that is because I, I would get annihilated. Yeah, people are too fucking good on that. Oh yeah, there'd be people flying through the air, shoot me from a mile mile away with a s- sniper rifle, and I just spawn. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Seriously, it's like an everyday thing. And then, so then, I'll, uh, the game will be over, and some kid will be going, "You fucking noob! Happy <laughs> gaming, you're <a> fucking noob." <laughs> that's why I. Ne- that's why I never go online with these kind of games. I must be one of the few people who buys like Call of Duty and Halo just for the single player. <laughs> you're not alone. You're not alone. <laughs> it's just if, if I had twenty hours a day to devote to actually playing it and getting good at it, I might, but. You know, I don't. So I'll limit myself to the story, and that's good enough. Ben, have you played Black Ops yet? I have. Yeah, what are your thoughts about it? I would definitely say the single player, of all the ones that I played, it's definitely got the best single player campaign in terms of just story, in terms of, you know, it doesn't feel too rushed. It doesn't feel like an afterthought, much like the Modern Warfare ones were. Um, I enjoyed the different settings. I enjoyed, you know, especially when you're going on the boat and you're shooting down all the different things in Vietnam. Um, so I think it was it was definitely the most varied and at least for me, definitely the most satisfying when I finally beat it. I didn't feel like it ended abruptly and I was sitting there going, OK, that's it. Um, I did try the online and as predicted, I got annihilated. Um, I think some kid shot me down and I don't remember exactly what he called me. Something with the word penis in it, but it's just got <laughs> you penis breath. Might have been a flashlight. I don't know. <laughs> actually, well, actually, no, I think what he called me, he called me a penis burger, whatever that is. My response to him was, I don't know what a penis burger is, but I'm pretty sure you're enjoying one right now. So <laughs> oh, you are nom, what you nom, 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 nom. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, hey, that's another one, though. That that came out this year, too. How about this, you guys? We haven't talked about this. How about Other M? Metroid. I never picked it up. Never got it. No, I didn't either. I just, I heard so much bad stuff. I remember when we had Stuttering Craig from ScrewTack on. He was going, oh, guys, no. Stay away. And I'm like, really? Just because I I, I didn't, I don't like what they did to Samus. Like, turning her into some whiny girl. I I, I don't play the game on that basis alone. Mm Mm-hmm. So she's like, who? Oh, you know, it's, it's just like some whiny girl. That's uh, you know, I can't even do the impersonation that he did. So it's like, I, I that turned me off. And I talked to Rob, and he said the voice acting was really bad in it. And I, I'm, I love Metroid. And for for me not to get a Metroid game, I'll get it cheap. I will. Yeah, I'll, I'll get it eventually too. Yeah. For like, <laughs> we'll all, we'll all like that. I have to have it. 
because it's a Metroid game. What, what are you guys' thoughts, Ben? Did you play it? Uh, no, I didn't actually. And I, yeah. for the same reasons you did, I heard a lot of stuff about how they changed the game. They changed the characters. Honestly, I couldn't justify picking it up as a full retail title. But, you know, it is Metroid and I've loved the series since day one, since, you know, totally. playing the original on the NES. So yeah. I kind of feel I, I feel compelled to get it, even if I know I'm not going to like it as much. It's one of those weird, almost guilt factors that it comes with certain games. I have a loyalty to it, even if the newest yeah. incarnation is not that good. Kind of like Final Fantasy, yeah, exactly. Exactly. I, I'll, I'll always go on and get usually get it, but ah, it's so so disappointing with that game. I was really disappointed by that. Wow. It could improve. I mean, they're going to be. Re- you're talking about 14, right? Sorry, I was actually going back to Metroid. Like when I oh. heard Metroid the Ram, when I heard Team Ninja was involved, I I remember I was excited. I had my fist in the air. I was like, this is going to be unbelievable. And then, then yeah, they did. They just started doing the flashy cinemas, and I was like, "Hey, I'm down with that. That looks great." And then when they made her like all whiny, I was like, "Oh, damn! <laughs> what did they do?" If they're gonna go any direction with her. They need to just give us gamers what we've been wanting for a long time with Samus. Hey, well, what do you get? Here's another. Here's another Thank topic. <laughs> yeah, yeah you know, her and Princess Peach on the night out. What do you guys think <laughs> about this in video Girls games? Wild. What do you guys think about this in video games? Like. Samus talking or non-talking, Link talking or non-talking. I personally, this is my personal preference, I like my main character not talking. Agreed. I like all the other characters in the storyline talking, but I, am I like kind of weird here? But because I'm playing that character, I kind of envision me as, not as that character, but controlling that character. When he's talking like, hey, everybody, how are you doing? It's like, no, that's, that's not my super cool hero, is it? Uh, I prefer my main character not talking, but that's just me. What do you guys think? I honestly, I don't care too much. When it comes to non-talking characters, though, I like it when they give you um, dialogue options and then the other characters directly re- you know, react to that reaction. Mm. That's what I like. I don't like them to be completely silent. I like some options, you know. I prefer the non-talking as well, and I remember specifically with Mario and Zelda when they started adding voices to it. It yes. just got really it, for me. It got really annoying, especially I think it was the Mario games that got ported to the Game Boy Advance, and then they added. Oh, that in was the terrible, annoying. eh? Oh my god! Well, with Super horrible. Mario, especially, I was playing Mario too, and every time you die, it would be like, "Oh, mamma mia!" And I know that over and over again, and just burns into your brain. Same with Zelda. Like every time he swings his sword, it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I know. It's so funny you bring that up. It kill it, it. It didn't kill it for me. I mean, these are still great games, and yeah, I don't think it's depleted. But it makes it kind of goofy in a way. And yes. and I remember just the pleasure of just the platforming and the challenge. It's kind of diminished by the goofy factor to it. So yeah, I don't think it was a great improvement. But hey, you know, I agree with you fully, one hundred percent on that one for sure. You know what? What about you? Um, what do you guys think? Game, sir? You know, I don't have a preference one way or another, to be honest with you. It's kind of different. <laughs> Jason? I don't really have a preference either. I do I do agree with you guys on it being annoying. It's one of the main things that kind of drove me nuts about the Zelda games. Every time you swing the sword, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, my God. Here's another game that I did not pick up. Heard such great things about it. Actually, I saw, actually, uh, Gamester, like Randy was showing this at PAX to us. In that hotel room, three D three D dot heroes. Yeah, I was gonna bring that up. Yeah, that's on my list as well. Oh, that's God, I can't get games. that. It's kind of like Zelda, isn't it? Top down. Yeah, it's of. exactly. Yeah. If you like old school Zelda, that's exactly what this game is. Except that it's like a throwback to RPGs as well. It's it's a good game. I need to go back and try and play that before I make my list. Yeah, I need to get that mm. game. Jesus Christ, it's really cheap now. You can get it cheap. Yeah, it's hard to find. It's not. It's not. It's not hard to find, but it's not easily available uh, up here. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, they had that at PAX, didn't they? Like you mentioned, huh? Yeah, well, Randy, Randy, yeah. uh, you remember Randy? He he brought his PS3 and had it loaded full of games, and uh, he brought up uh, that game, and uh, he was demoing, demoing it to me, and he'd finished the game. He had every weapon and all that, and I was like, wow, I really, I need to get this. It was one I already, that was, I already knew I had to get, but wow, very cool game. Like, I need to pick that up. Oh, here's another goddamn game. Transformers <laughs> War for Cybertron. I was just thinking that game, actually. What did you think of that, Ben? 
Um, I grew up on the original Transformers cartoons, and I'd say this is the one game that's really kind of captured the kind of cheesiness, the -the over-the-top nature of it. Um, it, Gameplay is incredibly tight. It's a really, really good third-person action shooter. And, I mean, I'm playing through the Decepticon campaign right now, and one of the strengths of it, I think, is that you can go back and play the Autobot, or if you choose to play one or the other, you can go back and play it again through a different campaign. So there's a lot of replay value to it. And it's one of the few few online shooters that I don't totally suck at either. So I have a little bit more more affection for this game so definitely recommend it for transformers fans avoid the ones based on the movies oh yeah that definitely. one mm-hmm. but what do you think john have you picked it up yet or um no i haven't picked it up yet no yeah you should, you should, you should really get it on the cheap man because it's it's an excellent excellent game i, I, saw, I saw your review did you do a review on it a while ago? I, I didn't do a review i, I just I, in my new game episode it. i just kind of yeah. mentioned, mentioned yeah. it yeah yeah i love it it's the really graphics look really amazing they are but, so it's not based on the movie; it's based on the series. It's no, it's based in it's. It's basically it's. It takes all the Generation One characters and explains what happens before okay. we kind of see them. So it's like, it, I, am I right, Ben? It's a couple of hundred years before. Is that about right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. I'm always skeptical to be honest with you. Buying games based on movies nowadays. Oh God, yeah, for it's sure. Just, typically, they're not very, very good. I kind of stopped doing that after uh, ET for twenty six hundred. I just stopped doing it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Transformers War for Cybertron, another, uh, I think, underappreciated game of 2010 that really deserved a little bit more. Uh... Oh, God, here's another one, guys. I did not get it. You did get it. Mod Nation Racers. I was really let down by that game, actually. Really? I, didn't really, I didn't get into it as much as I thought I would. I, I picked it up a little bit later after it came out, and I went online. You know, I played the single player, and I didn't really care for it, honestly. And then I went online. The biggest draw back for me was the controls were overly complex, and this something just felt off with the handling on it, and the graphics were a little bit stuttery. Like they were trying to push the great, you know, the graphics couldn't handle, I guess, the speed of the game and having to render these user created levels. It it felt off to me. You know, there was a separate mm-hmm. button for sliding, separate button for jumping, separate button for doing this, that. Like it was too overly complex for a kart racer. The load times they hear are really, really bad. Oh God, the load times terrible, terrible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe that's what killed it. We actually have it at work. I, I played it a lot, of, actually a little bit against some other people. It's kind of a fun game, but I, I don't know if I need to have it. I, I remember being hyped for it though. I'll get it cheap, and when they actually issue a patch to uh, actually correct me if I'm wrong, have they patched the load times yet? I know they released a couple of fixes, but I'm not sure if that was taken care of. Do you know? Not sure. I, I don't know. I, I know I played it. Maybe too, really not that long ago. Like it, it was a while since it had it had been out, and I tried to play it again, and there was still bad load times. So, Sin of Punishment Star Successor. Sin of Punishment. Oh yeah, I see that a lot too. It's a good game. Um, game of the year? Hell no! But it was a very enjoyable arcade shooter. That honestly, I never expected this to ever. Whoever expected a sequel to Sin of Punishment to come out in North America, considering the only U.S. release we had of that is on the, the Virtual Console. Mm-hmm. And even then, it was a. a what, it was an import title. Yeah. yeah, but I think they translated it though. Right. Do you think it'll become rare? It's one of those games that in my mind uh, would become rare, but honestly, like I don't think they really are. In terms of like regular retail games, it's really really hard to classify games as rare anymore because because of eBay and you know GameStop and all that right now at least there's really nothing truly rare. Well, no, no. Like right now it's not rare. But I'm okay. saying in a couple of years time maybe it didn't get a, a huge print run. Right now it feels like there's a lot but then all of a sudden you know uh, 10 years. Pete, Pete, I agree with you and, and you're, you're right in like 99% of the time that's true except for with most recently the Mario All-Stars 25th anniversary. That's a weird that, one. Oh that is God. an exception because that thing's rare now. Yeah, I got burned. Rare. I got burned with that one. Oh, you and me sure. both, dude. I, you know, and for me, it's my own stupidity actually because I was in a store, I saw it on the shelf, and I was in a rush to go, and I said, "Okay, well, I'll come back tomorrow and get it." Lo and behold, they were all sold out, and they're now going for what a hundred, hundred fifty dollars on eBay. Whoa! Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I can I tell my story? Sure. All right. So I pre-ordered it. Like oh, two, no. two months ago, right? And you, you guys know how GameStop is. Okay, this is my kind of bash at GameStop. I don't really give a shit. So here we go. You know how you go to GameStop and you buy a game, right? And there, what, what's the first thing they say to you when you're standing there and check out? Do they have to reserve any games? Fuck yes. What do I okay. say? Sure. You, you say fuck yes. I say yeah, I would. Mm-hmm. 
And so what do I pre-order? I pre-order all these games. I pre-ordered Mario All-Stars. It's like two months away, a month away, whatever. They don't say anything about it, right? And I just paid for it in full. I'm like, I'll just pay for it right here. It's only 30 bucks. I don't care. Paid for it. Anyway, time came around. I was working a lot. It was the holidays. Look, I have myself to blame, all right? But I didn't go and pick it up. I went in there. I said, I reserved the game. This was maybe th- three days after it came out. Either way. Oh, no. I said, I reserved the game. I paid for it in full. Here's my receipt. I'd like to pick it up. The dude laughed at me. He goes, oh, man, we, we would have sold that. Ooh. I go, what do you mean you would have sold it? <laughs> you paid for it in full. I go, sure I, I, I go, look, I paid for it in full. I mean, this is it. I, I, like a month ago. I goes, oh, man, no, no, no. Our policy is we hold it for 48 hours. If you don't come in, we sell it. I just, I flipped a lid. Did they give you your money back? I go, dude, you've got to be kidding me. I paid for it in full. Oh, my God. You don't say shit about it. when The first thing you say to me when I come in and buy anything, would you like to pre-order? Would you like to pre-order? Would you like to pre-order? So I do. You don't say shit about it. Now, make sure to come in and pick it up within 48 hours or it will be sold. As a matter of fact, where's my receipt? I don't even, I don't even know <laughs> if it says it on the receipt. Hey, there's a survey you can take, Jason. On the oh, student, oh. Student, yeah. oh I'm did a, they call you, Jason, to no, say, hey, it's in? No, no. No, they're supposed to do that, aren't they? Dude, I got voicemails for... Smash Brothers Brawl. I got voicemails for Black Ops. I didn't get one call or even a text. Sometimes I get text <laughs> messages for this. Nothing. Wow. Did you get your money back? So he's like, well, I can uh, call other stores, see if I can find it, or I can just give you your money back. I'm like, yeah, why don't you call the other stores? And at this point, I'm, I'm freaking out because I'm like, <laughs> I know this shit's not going to be available. So they're calling around. He's like, well, the closest one is uh, about 30 miles away. And the other douchebag there behind him was like, oh, man, that's so far. Oh, my God. I'm like, shut up, dude. Shut up. <laughs> I'm, like, wow. I'm like shaking my head, like looking at him like, no, nah, just be quiet. So I'm like, why don't you call the store to confirm it's there? Because I guarantee you if I drive out there, it won't be there. So he calls, says they have four. Oh, my God. Call the store. None. Gone. As of that morning. I'm like, oh, my God. Just give me my money back. Just give me my money back. So I got my money back. I left the store totally pissed and um yeah so i basically shit out of luck i came right home dude what's the first thing i did i'm i'm here i'm crying i'm whining i get on facebook i'm like does anybody live in new york because i know on the last uh episode you guys were said that there were a ton of them at at, uh, nintendo world right Mm -hmm. i was like does anyone live near nintendo world because that's the only place i know or at least hopefully we'll have them someone lives close can they go pick me up a copy or two I honestly, I want one to keep sealed to have forever in the collection and one to play. That's ultimately what I want. So I put that out there. A day went by, nothing. And then the next day, um, Kane Turner, you guys know him? Oh, yeah. He's a great guy. Great guy. Great guy. Dude had two of them on eBay. They were already at like one was at 55 and one was at like 43 with like three days left. Right. He goes, I will cancel them right now if you want them. Hmm. Wow. Ooh, I go. You, I go. Are you serious? He's like, yeah. I, I'll help you out. You know, gamers loving gamers. I'm like, look. Yes, do it. Cancel him. <laughs> and he did. Wow. And he sold them to me. Wow. He, okay. Big props. Most definitely. I'm actually going to do a video and like thank him and and just yeah. I just feel really blessed. The guy was totally awesome. So I, I know he's listening too. So. Kane, awesome man. I appreciate it. He gave me both copies. He sold me both copies. Wow. He's like, yeah, I don't even, he goes, I don't even, he goes, I don't even care yeah. about the money. Whatever. <laughs> just, I want to help you out. I, I just think that's absolutely amazing. Yeah, that's he's a, he's a very good guy for sure. I I talked to him a few times and it's been uh, always a great conversation. Definitely. So big props to Kane Turner. Yeah, out there. Thank you, sure. Kane. Love it. I'm looking forward to him. They actually should be in the mail tomorrow. I should be getting them. So very happy. Very anyway, cool. but that's Tonight. my horrible story that turned totally awesome. Wow, GameStop screwed you, bro. All I gotta that say sucks. is, fuck GameStop. So what does that mean, uh, Jason? Are you ever going to go there again? Are you done? I'm going to boycott it as long as possible. I'm going to go to Amazon uh, from here on out, dude. You should get those employees in trouble laughing at you. They totally were. The little douchebag back there is like, oh man, it's like so far. I'm like, oh, you're such a dumbass. Well, you know what? It's just, you know, the amount of times I've gone into these places and I'm like, hey, do you guys have this game? And they're like, oh, did you pre-order it? Oh, yeah. I fucking hate that. Hey mm-hmm. Jason, seriously, yeah, you went to the one in Chandler. The one, right, the one right across from In and Out. Okay, I know the district manager actually personally. 
So you want me to give, I'll give him, I'll give you his contact information if you want to contact him. I would absolutely love it. Okay. It was the most horrible experience. Wow. If those, if those GameStop employees are listening to the podcast right now, they're going to shit their pants thinking, oh no, we're in trouble. (laughs) Well, here's what it is. Here's what it is. I don't care if you're selling doggy bags. I don't care if you're selling video games. I don't care if you're selling cars. You have to be respectful to your customers. Totally. Period. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. End of story. Doesn't matter. And they were just they were just jackasses. They were just stupid jackasses. This it's not right. It's not good business. And you know what they could have said to you? Oh my god, you know, you know, sir, we're totally sorry, but you have to pick it up in forty eight hours and because we have to sell it after that point because we don't think anybody's coming in. Like, yeah, like, I'm oh, we're so sorry that that our policy wasn't told to you. Look, you have to give sympathy, then you have to give empathy. I mean, am, exactly. am I a dumb shit here? Is that mm-hmm. that's, that's totally common, people? Yeah. yeah. No. Oh, dude. Yeah. Sorry, man. Oh, we we sold it. Uh, <laughs> sorry, man. That's oh, totally what it was. I can understand. Maybe if like maybe put five dollars down on it. You know, maybe they were, but you paid it in full. Full? They should have held it's it. Your it's your copy. Paid full. They should, you pay, it's paid for. They collected the money already on it. They shouldn't double sell it. Yeah. It's like what airlines do. They double extra sell seats. It pisses me off. You know, like, oh, we oversold the flight. I'm like, you didn't have anything to sell. It wasn't yours to sell. Someone already paid for the seats, right? Same kind of concept, right? Same concept. They mm-hmm. were already yeah. sold. O- already sold. And that's, that's, that's actually, yeah. That's very so bad. anyway, news to everyone out there at GameStop, and most people, you know, they pick it right up. You pre-order it, you want it, whatever. You know, it's my fault. I have myself to blame. But here's the thing: you have to pick it up within 48 hours, and they're oh, gonna no. they're gonna be there all day long. You want to pre-order? You want to? They know they change it, man. They totally change. It. Sometimes it's 24 hours. It's bullshit. I, God, it's I remember bullshit. a couple of years ago, I had the same experience. I pre-ordered something for Rob's birthday. This is way before I did anything on YouTube, and. um I went down to pick it up. I had fully paid for it because I, I wanted this pre-order bonus. It was for some like Castlevania, Lord, the Shadow, the Ruins game. What, what am I thinking about here? Portrait of Ruin. Oh, Portrait of Ruin. Thank you. And it came with a, yeah, this is like like pre-order bonus. And was, the woman's like, oh, here's the game. I'm like, where's the pre-order bonus? Oh, well, you had to pick that up, you know, right away. I'm like, well, I was working. I, I like, you know, <laughs> I have a job, some lady. People work. Some people work. I can't get there when you phone me. You know, and I, this was under 24 hours. Oh, well, we gave it away. What do you mean you gave it away? I pre-ordered it for the bonus for my friend's birthday. That's why I put all the money down. Mm-hmm. You know what? They're really funny. Oh, here's another one. Um, I went in to um, pre-order the Nintendo 3DS the other day. And uh, so I walk in and I walk into the counter. And I'm like, hey, I want to pre-order the Nintendo 3DS. And the guy's like, oh, uh, do we take pre-orders for that? Oh yeah, they do that shit all the time. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then the the woman, you know, big brash woman there. She's like, she's like, um, you need to put fifty dollars down on it. You know that, right? And I'm like, I turn her. I'm like, I can do that. <laughs> I'm yeah. just like, I can pay for the whole fucking thing right now, you stooge. Why? Yeah. Why? why <laughs> Seriously a, though. Seriously. Why are you talking down to me like I'm a kid? Hey, hey, young man, you have to pay fifty dollars for that. What does she think I'm gonna do? Start crying and run out the store? Oh, it's fifty dollars. I can't do that. Like, <laughs> you what does she expect? Like, you to pick it up for free or pay nothing down? What? The, what right, the fuck? Right. What do you mean? I I, I can't pre-order it for free. What, you mean it's it? not a buy one get one free? What the fuck? I don't want it. So I'm like, yeah, I, I, I can do that. Fifty I just bucks, a kid. No shit, yeah. Sherlock. Fifty yeah. bucks. I know I you're. I know that... you're planning on putting a hundred. So, yeah. so no, Jason. Exactly what you're saying is that ah, it's not that they sold your game. It's not that sucks. That goes without saying. But come on, talk to us like normal people. Don't don't pull the nerd bullshit. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Oh, you didn't pre-order it. Well, that's too bad for you. <laughs> exactly. It was just totally mm-hmm. disrespectful. I felt like I was being treated like a a freaking eight-year-old yeah you're already upset you didn't get it and even eight-year-olds shouldn't be treated that way you know what i'm saying it's just it's such crap yeah i hate that i have to go there i hate it i do too and you know what the last i went in there pre-ordered the 3ds too and i got a very similar experience but i mean you basically nailed it but i i pre-ordered it too and i'm thinking you know i think this may be the last thing unless i'm in dire yeah, need of some shit that, right there i know because it's so convenient but you know what no. this is bs dude this is. Yeah. This, I'm gonna try to stay away from that place. I'm gonna do yeah. Amazon or, I mean, Pete, you use Amazon. They got great pre-order stuff. They they yep. get you to the next day. What the fuck? Next, I'm in no hurry. Next day, it's amazing. Well, I'm in no well hurry. here's mm-hmm. the thing, Pete. Where are you getting your 3ds from? Nintendo World, probably. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. See, they don't have an online store. Believe me, I looked. Yeah. 
Game Store, where are you getting your 3DS from? I reserved mine at GameStop already, actually. Ben, so are, you, are you... I better sorry, get in 48 hours, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ben, what are you, are, you, are you ordering the 3DS? I'm very tempted to, actually. But um, the thing with me and consoles and handhelds in general is I usually jump on board around the second generation when the price drops and they work out some of the bugs. I feel yeah. compelled to get the 3DS, though. But, it, I mean, what's the price going to be? Do any of you know? Probably, I hear $300. That's uh, around $300. That's what I think what Sony Japan for. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to sit on the sidelines a bit and just wait to see how it works because, honestly, like, I've never bought something at launch. Like, I didn't buy the original Fat DS. I didn't buy the original PSP. I just kind of wait until it's been out for a while the price drops they add more features to it like bigger drive or you know better yeah. usability I, I typically wait but then again i say that now i could be first in line on launch day so who knows yeah, i know what happens right but i love i love the technology and i did get to see it i was at the uh the toronto fan expo uh this past summer and they had a booth where they were allowing people to play with it as well as like with uh, the connect and the ps the, uh, the playstation move it looks really good and it functions really well so i'm definitely well, sorry what did you think about the 3d like give us an in-depth thing here you know what? <laughs> I'm not a fan of 3D in general just because I don't feel like it adds anything. But on a handheld, it actually works pretty well. I mean, I was actually really surprised with how functional it was and how good it actually looked. I mean, for a handheld, you know, you wouldn't you would expect it to be more gimmicky or more just like a yeah. useless novelty. But I think it will add a lot to the game. So I think anyone who is getting a 3DS will, you know, they won't be disappointed with it. And I might, admittedly, I didn't get to play a lot with it because there was like a lineup of about a thousand people behind me. But you know, I definitely think it's impressive, and I'd love to see where Nintendo is going to go with this technology. I can see Sony kind of following suit a couple of years with. Oh, everybody's going to follow through. It'd be yeah, as they always do. Yeah, we're not quite there yet because I haven't yet seen a good 3D movie that floored me. I haven't yet, you know, invested in a 3D TV, but I can see for a handheld, it would actually be maybe a little bit better. I don't, I don't know. Oh, you didn't like the 3D in Avatar? I don't know. I, I, you I don't, don't have know. to like the movie, but what do you think of the 3D? Oh, no, I love the movie, but it, the 3D was impressive. I mean, it gives you a nice depth of feel and, you know, you feel like you're more immersed in it. The other yeah. 3D movies I've seen, like, did I really need to see, what was it, Despicable Me in 3D or did I really need to see <laughs> Saw in 3D? Jackass no. 3D. Jackass, yeah, Jackass in 3D. <laughs> That's the one I haven't seen, actually, and I heard that was actually really good. <laughs> of course. <laughs> if, you like, if you like Jackass, of course. I'm talking about the yeah. 3D aspect of it, though. The 3D aspect. Yeah, I, I, I won't see a movie because there's 3D added onto it. I mean, you know, if it's the only option, as it was the only option with Avatar, I'll go for it. It's like two bucks extra. But, you know, I don't feel it adds a lot to it enough to justify the extra price. Well, then, but, Ben, then it, my question to you is this. Mm -hmm. You just said that you're not going to go see a movie if it has 3D added onto it. Well, I won't see it just because it's 3D. All right. If it's if it's a movie I want to see, then I don't mind because I know some people hate 3D because either it gives them headaches or they don't like the glasses or something. I'm not like that. It's just for me, I still see 3D as kind of gimmicky. I mean, again, when Star Wars 3D comes out in the theaters and was it 2012 or 2013? I'll be first in line for that. That, that, was, that was my question. Oh, we're going to have this argument again. Don't you think that will be gimmicky? You know what? I say it now, but look at how fast technology progresses. It could be the most amazing thing two years down the line. Looking at it right now, it's still relatively new. 3D TVs yet to have, they have yet to make a real dent in the home viewing market. So I don't see them, you know, taking over as of yet. Two years down the line, it could be a totally different ballgame. And Lucas, I know, LucasArts Studio, they're actually building the 3D from the ground up for the movies. And they're even saying it's not going to be like, you know, you're tacked on you know, 2D converted to a 3D movie to sell tickets, it's going to be something different. So, so there you go, I mean, Johnny. Battle of, well, the no. Battle of the Titans was horrible in 3Ds. That gave me a <laughs> headache. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm totally confused here. What, what do you mean? They're rebuilding the original movies from the ground up? When like they frame announced, by frame, yeah. Yeah, when they announced it, I read an article and it was basically the creative director of LucasArts was saying that, you know, they recognize 3D as seen, you know, as kind of a gimmick to some people and you know, you'd be right for thinking that re-releasing the Star Wars is yet another cash in, but yeah. they're gonna just they're gonna do something different, and they're gonna give us a different element of 3D that we haven't seen. Again, at this point, they're just words. We'll see what happens when it hits the screen. But I'm definitely interested. Y yeah, I actually heard that they're replacing all the stormtroopers uh, with the Navi, so that's gonna be pretty cool. <laughs> a little crossover <laughs> there. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be this is a brand new thing. It, yeah, it takes place on Pandora. And, I heard the start the Star Destroyer is actually gonna be a big whale. They're actually put the, put the whale in there yeah. to make the cameo. The whale's asshole in full 3D. It'll be oh, tantalizing. Yeah, you he guys have been licking it a lot. He's getting all Jay, sick. Jason's uh, already uh, foaming at the mouth there. He's getting all excited about it. I'll totally line up for that. <laughs>
So to- I'm just going to stay with my virtual boy duct tape to my head. I'm all right with that. There you go. Oh, so did you guys hear about the health warning? I did. The, I did. The 3D graphics yeah. on the 3DS that if you have any children, any six year old children in the room, you uh, best keep it away from them because it could probably die. Really? <laughs> no. Yes. Honestly, like um, the 3DS emits this satanic ray, uh, but it only affects children uh, who are like six years old and un- under. Yeah. Uh oh. Seriously, Miyamoto's son died. <laughs> He gave it to his son, and his son, he woke up the next day, and he was like, 666 was on his forehead, he was dead. <laughs> Seriously, so watch out for that. It's called the Satan Ray. Totally dead. It's a yeah. pre-order bonus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it burned the back of his eye muscles or something, I'm, I'm not quite sure. I, I call bullshit. <laughs> what are you talking about? Miyamoto's son died, it's, it's top news. It's huge. But it is, it is real news, though, like they say on there, there is kids, six, kids yeah. under six should not play the 3DS because it'll ruin their eyes. Really? Hmm. Something their eyes haven't developed yet, or you know. Yeah, they said the same thing about the Virtual Boy. Like, can give you headaches and seizures. Like, that's a that's a good selling tactic. Yeah, and that's true. Yeah, it does give me headaches. <laughs> and anybody always, else, like people like us, should take thirty minute breaks. So, have some tea and biscuits every thirty minutes, guys. Okay. Yeah, I owned I owned a Virtual Boy back in the day, and I had no problem playing that thing for at least two or three hours at a time. <laughs> you know? Same here. I love that thing. I do. It's really, it's really underrated, and I think you know it, it. It didn't really take off, and it had a lifespan of what six months. But some really good games on there. I actually want to go back and start collecting for it. I think I still have the, the it's, console it's itself. Kind of a yeah, it's kind of a cool classic now. A lot of people are, you know, especially now that three D is in. Now people are starting to go on eBay, and you can see the prices of it jumping up now mm-hmm. for the Virtual Boy. Yeah, they're going up and up and up. Yeah, one of my favorite systems ever. Actually, I really enjoy it. Really. Mm-hmm. Some other big news this week um, is that the PS3 got hacked, like full on hacked. It's fully open that somebody can actually make it into like, you know, basically like the old modded Xboxes. You can put all, you know, any of your own movies on and watch things the way you want, play emulation on there. So uh, it's fully broken now. It's it can be, you know, it's being compromised. But uh, so now, yeah, basically you'll be able to rip movies on that thing. And this is in the future. This is when the. Uh, you know, the homebrew guys get in there and start making their own stuff for it, making their own dashboards and stuff like that. But kind of, kind of exciting. I'm not, I'm not excited about the piracy aspect. I'm not, I don't care about that, but I, I'm interested in, you know, God, the things you could actually do with it. You can actually like stream your movies on there the way you want to do it. And just, just kind of do it the way you want. It's kind of like the modded Xbox. I don't know any of you guys have an old modded Xbox, but I sure do. And I'd love to upgrade to a PS3. That would be cool. That'd be really something else. That is interesting. I'm amazed, yes. I'm, I'm amazed it took them this long to do it. Yeah, that, that root key was really hard from the crack. I remember, like they finally did it. But yeah. now, is there is there anything that Sony can do to like download a patch to prevent it, or is it too late? Mm, I think it's too late. I think it's too late. Like Microsoft patches their stuff online, and they're very. I remember seeing a big, I seeing a conference on this like last week that these guys were saying, "Oh my god, I'm going to start coughing. This goddamn cold is killing me." I need some Gatorade here. Just give me a sec. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> See, this whale business, man. So what happens when you look at uh, Will's asshole, you know? <laughs> Pete will tell you. Pete had this last week. Does it taste like tuna? No. Oh. It's getting real Sorry. stanky on this bitch. Oh. <laughs> Maybe I'll just take a... Um, a break here and let you guys continue on. But uh, no, but yeah, they just said that Microsoft stuff was very hard to crack. PS3, not so bad. Speaking of I'm Microsoft, out. speaking of Microsoft here, you guys, something else that happened this year, too. I know we're talking about games and all that. But remember, on April 15th, Xbox Live for the original Xbox was discontinued. Do you remember that? Mm. You guys ever play in any original Xbox Live? Of course. Games? Yes. And they yeah. uh, me- remember when yeah. they mentioned that? quite a while ago and people were freaking out and you know talking all this crap about it and and they did they pulled the trigger it was on april 15th what was the reason behind that because there was still an active server for halo 2 and i think people oh, were still playing that Fantasy was Star. the majority of the community that was very very <laughs> upset about it and i remember reading vaguely that uh, microsoft was talking about they need to discontinue it to help advance you know the 360 platform which is the dominant platform and uh, compatibility issues or this and that from what I remember reading. 
Some some sort of bullshit like that. Makes you wonder if they might be releasing Halo 2 and 1 on the 360, like an HD, like what they did with God of War. You know, I don't know. Yeah. It yeah. would it, it would make sense if they would, yeah. Yeah. They'd sell a ton of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. All right, guys, we've come to that part in the wonderful podcast where we answer your questions. We're going to start out by doing an audio question. So, Johnny, what's the signal? I never know what the signal is. It's the same one every time. Play the play the damn thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> play the darn thing. Hey guys, how's it going? I was actually wondering your opinions on some of your local or retro game stores, uh, such as Johnny and Game Deals. I live in Dallas, Texas, and there's a lot of new game shops that are popping up every few months. But I noticed within a store that the prices are too high on a lot of games and systems and so on. So I actually find better deals like you guys on eBay or Craigslist. Anyways, I was just wondering whether you guys go to your local game stores or not, and if you thought they were worth uh, spending money there. Keep up the great work with the podcast. See you soon. Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, thanks. He didn't say his name, so we'll just call him Mr. Dallas. Yeah. Dallas. Can I just start this? Because, sure. yeah, he Please. did mention that I always talk about game deals. And that's a local store by me. I mention it probably every goddamn podcast. It's kind of funny. They're not paying me, honestly. Bad company, me- too. But they give me yeah, but they give me <laughs> another hundred dollars for Jason. <laughs> another hundred dollars, yeah. Exactly. But you know, like it's funny. Yeah, there's EB Games, there's there's Walmart, there's all sorts of places we can buy our video games. But I always go down there because I'm actually going to get a deal. And um, what I'm meaning is, is like I won't say what the games were, but I picked up like four games the other day for like eighty dollars, and it was like totally worth going there and getting the games. Like. I couldn't have gotten that from uh, Amazon or from anywhere else that he cut me a deal. And that's why you go to these, what you would class as smaller game stores. Mm -hmm. The game stores have to be competitive. We were talking about this before. Remember I I went to a newer game store and I was asking how much the prices on some of these games were like on burning Rangers, $109. Oh my God. Dynamite ducks, 95 50. Yeah. Worth every penny. <laughs> worth every penny. But what, what do you guys think about that? Like, do you guys go to any game stores, like uh, local ones by you? And what, yeah, what do you I think hate GameStop. I, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really don't have any around me. Yeah, wow. I, I have a few, actually. Do you? Which one's good? Yeah, well, well, I live in Toronto, and there's two specific places that I go to. I avoid EB Games and GameStop like the plague for nice. the reasons the reasons already discussed, and the anal retentive part of me that can't stand having stickers and you know, Yo, me too. Oh, I hate God, too. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a couple places I go to. There's Game Center and ANC Games. Both of them are really good. The drawback is the retro titles. They know what they're worth. So you can expect to pay, you know, what higher prices for them. But I find in terms of selection, in terms of customer service, because they're actual gamers, they're not just, you know, people hired for their after school job or something. And, you know, it's it's a personality to the store. You know, the people who know games, they can recommend games to you and they will cut you a deal. I mean, even then when I go to buy a game, I rarely ever pay full retail for a brand new title unless it's something I have to have. I find at GameStop or EB Games, you get a $5 discount for a used title. That's that's not very good. So I'll go to places like Game Center or ANC Games. Both of them are in downtown Toronto. If anyone lives in Toronto and is listening, you probably already know what I'm talking about. But they'll often have new titles. Well, they'll have used titles for new releases, usually 20 sometimes $25 below what the full retail is. So that's where I'd prefer to put my business rather than, you know, a place like GameStop or EB games. That's going to overcharge and give you an inferior product. Yeah. And, and sell your reservations. Yeah. Well, exactly. well said by everybody. <laughs> it's also the social aspect of going there and you, you get to know everybody who goes in there. It's going to be like a, a bit of fun. Not only are you buying games, but you're having a good time there. It, it's a really good selling point. And I find that's what keeps me going back to it. I mean, I remember exactly. one time I, well, one time I went into a game store. I didn't even plan on buying anything, you know, and I ended up talking to the guy for two hours. I was on my lunch break from work. I got in shit for it, but you know, I <laughs> ended up buying, he recommended like five titles to me that I ended up getting. It wasn't too expensive. And I loved each one of them. And you don't get that from like a big box store, like Best Buy or Walmart. You certainly no. really get that from GameStop. I don't want to say there's no good GameStop employees, but you know, I've the ones I've run into are few and far between. Yeah, so I'm already right saying to- it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, just if there's any easily offended listeners out there, you know, you know, I'm, kind I'm of- just kidding. It really comes down to the to the person. It totally exactly. does. It totally does. And I don't want to paint everyone bad just because you have a bad experience. Yeah, but, they're you not. Know, they're not. That's what represents the business in my mind. That's why I don't shop there. But yeah, there's a lot of places in Toronto, and also, you know, we have a lot of good flea markets and kind of the outer lying areas where you can get good stuff too. So, yeah, a lot of lot of options for me for sure. 
I have a lot of options in, in the Phoenix area as well, where I live. I, got, I know Jason and I have gone to Bookman's a couple of times. I introduced Jason to Bookman's. Sure did. There, there's a couple here in the Valley that we go to, that I go to regularly, and they sell a whole bunch of retro games. I think they're decently priced. Uh, some of the games might be a little bit on the more expensive side. You just kind of have to know what to look for. You can get some cool, you can get some steals there, though. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And they sell not only video games, but they sell records and albums and, you know, uh, toys. It's a pretty cool store pretty cool spot for sure there's another place by my house called game zone which i've gone to a couple times and the same kind of thing they it's a local mom and pop shop and uh it's fairly decent price as well uh they'll sell you know pretty much the oldest thing they'll sell is probably the nes nothing before the nes uh so if you're looking to get atari 2600 or any other earlier retro games you won't find it here uh but i'm really fortunate and jason i've been meaning to tell you this too uh the guy who runs the website atari2600.com He's actually a pretty good friend of mine, and he lives like two miles away from me. And he has this huge website, awesome website. So if you want any like old retro games, even NES games, this guy's house is unbelievable. I've gone there a couple times. I mean, it's like a museum walking in there. There are thousands of games. So I'll just like call him up every once in a while. I'm like, dude, can I come to your house and check out what you got for in stock? And he'll like, he'll, he'll set some stuff, stuff aside for me. It's pretty cool. Dude, so I go let's go. Awesome. That sounds great. Yeah, we need to do a video on that, dude. It's Let's do a do video it. on that, yeah. guys. Let's Unbelievable. go. Unbelievable. I took Vintage Video Game Geek actually came in town once and like visited me. And we we went there together and his his jaw dropped. Like he was just like, wow, this guy, his whole basement in his house is just video games, boxes and boxes. Oh, wow. That's it's cool. unbelievable. And this guy does it for a living. It's just like, dude, this is awesome. You know, like, yeah, it, it's, it's really cool. Really cool. So Atari2600.com. Check out the website. All right. Um, yeah. Let's yeah. go, though. Let's do that. Yeah. Hey, hey, John, yeah. John, I got yeah. I got to ask you sure. because you should be the expert on this. And I mean, the expert of the expert on this because you travel all yeah. across oh, the yeah. United States. Yeah. So yeah. You, you probably been to every kind of used gaming yeah. store out there. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what. I'm glad you brought that up, Johnny. There's this place in the Midwest there. I think they're out of Missouri, but I've seen them in Missouri. I've seen them in Oklahoma. Uh, I know they're in actually they're in Dallas as well uh, under a different different name but um i think it's a cd trading company in dallas but it's called vintage stock and i did a video once i think a little while back where i went to a vintage stock but they maybe have about 20 30 stores this is like the best store i've ever been to honestly really uh yeah they sell not only video games but they sell old school star wars stuff which i love i mean it's like i could go in there and shop and i've never gone into one and not bought anything it's like huh. and the people <laughs> kind of like ben was talking about people are helpful you ask questions like hey what, what's a good game you know, what, what's a good movie I want to watch, you know, and they'll recommend stuff, you know, they'll, they'll talk to you and they'll take time to go out of their way to, to answer questions for you. So those who live yeah. in the Midwest, you guys are very lucky. Vintage stock. You've also gotten some flack from some people at some places. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bringing your camera oh, in. Oh, I remember yeah, yeah, that yeah. one. So this is, this you is were talking story. to me about that. No, this, is, this is a really funny story, right? So uh, I'm, I'm in uh, Kansas City, right? And I'm a camera. So I go to, there's, there's several vintage stocks in the area. So I go to the very first vintage stock and I talk, I'm like, ask for the manager. I'm like, and it's kind of awkward, you know, like, how do you, you know? So I might go to the manager. I'm like, Hey, look, I got this YouTube channel and I want to do a video. And I just, just want to just take some video real quick of your store. Uh, and, and she, he was really cool with it. He's like, Oh, absolutely. And he's like, you just get me the camera too. He asked me questions, whatever. So then I went to another location, right? Maybe like five, six miles away. And I kind of got cocky. I'm like, you know, I'll just go in there and start filming, you know, because I assumed if one manager said it was okay, the other one would be too. <laughs> so here, here I am, like, I'm recording and this guy comes to me, like, text me. So he's like, he's like, what, what the hell are you doing? And I'm like, I have this YouTube channel and I just wanted to, I was at the other store. I talked to so-and-so. I just want to do this. And he's like, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. I'm going to have to take the camera too. I'm or the video. And I'm like, I'm like, fuck you. Like, really? You know, so he was just, the way he approached it was really like, kind of like, me by you got to get him on video and then make a video about him. Totally. So no. So I had this funny because I'm, I'm going to the third location and then I talked to the manager there and, and she was cool with it. But on the f- way to f- like going to the third location, I had this whole thing where I was filming myself. I was like ranting. I'm like, oh, this is bullshit, blah, blah. Right. So the next day I'm over and this is over by one of the places where I work uh, in Kansas City. And I went, I walked by and the manager of Vintage Stock came out and he's like, you're the guy who came in with the camera. And this is a different guy than the dude who could approach me uh, the other night before. So how did he recognize you, though? How did he? Because uh, I guess he described me as a guy with a backwards cap, and you know, and <laughs> and, and interesting. The manager is actually uh, a subscriber of mine too, which is kind of funny. So he recognized me from that. He knew me from YouTube, oh. Oh. right? So he, he like yeah, he's like yeah, I know you. I know your channel on YouTube, and he's like, I'm really sorry about that. And he was all apologetic, and he's like, 
you know, it's next time, give me a heads up. I'm like, you know, it was my bad for going in there and not like talking to the manager and shit. Right. But, you know, yeah. so I'll take, I'll take the blame on that one, you know? So it was cool. Long story short, everything worked out. I took the rant out of the video. I didn't want to put that in. I just like, you know, keep it positive. I should have left it in for some spice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just keep, keep the channel positive. You know, I don't want any, uh, them to get a bad rap because uh, fuck you know, the manager, fuck him to hell. <laughs> Well, that's the thing. He wasn't a manager. He was like a key holder, you know, you know, and it was like his first day or second day on the job. So like he really didn't know what was going on. And, you know, I think he thought I was in there doing like price, ch- like checking, which anyone can do anytime, you know, so it's, I don't, I don't know, whatever. But long story short, it worked out, but I still love the companies. I don't hate it. You know, it's a great company. Uh, VintageStock.com. So see if there's one by you guys. So is that, is that the best in the country that you've come across? Do you think, you know, digital press is cool. Uh, yeah. That was a really cool story. I was there, you know, last month. That was a lot of fun with, with Chris. And Chris, if you're listening, man, I hope you're feeling better. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll see. Because he's in the hospital right now, so hopefully. Yeah. And uh, no, I mean, there's there's just, there's a ton. You know, you just have to kind of know where to look. I always ask the locals, you know, when I'm out marketing or when I'm out in the field and just talking to people, hey, where do you guys get your local, like, old school games? And they'll, they'll usually tell me. So. Tell me you know. now. Tell me now. Yeah. How about you, Jason? What, how about you, buddy? What else? Anywhere else you go here in Phoenix I don't know about? Mm, no, man. That's pretty much it. You nailed the two places and then Bookman's, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's really it. Those are those are the gem spots here. Yeah, we oh, got I remember the video, video you guys had on Bookman's. I was like, that place looks pretty cool. It is a really cool. It's a cool. They actually have pretty good prices on games. I like how they hang their old school games like on the peg hooks. Like it's like walking into oh, it's an great. old school it's store. Great. Like how they used to sell them. You know, oh, it's great. And they're All displayed. Right. You can see them. You know, it's, it's really, really nice. I always buy some. I never walk out of there without something. I can't. Yeah. And just recently they started having like a little section where they've had like old school memorabilia from the 80s and 90s, which is really cool. Yeah. You know, so I'm like all over that. Every time I go there, I see some Star Wars thing. I want to get it for you. And I'm like, oh, fuck it. He's already got it. He's he's already got it. (laughs) He's already got it. That's the thing. He's already got it. Uh, I'm going to change genres here for a second. John, what is the best? um, Because you're all over the place. What is the best place to get like old school Star Wars toys and stuff like that? What what is it like one of the cooler retro places for that kind of stuff? Again, it's Venture Stock. They sell that stuff, too. Would you say that's the best, too, for Star Wars stuff and all? Yeah, seriously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. You know, actually, you know what? I have to find my vintage stuff. This is my kind of, sound kind of geeky or dorky, or whatever. But I go to antique shops to find yeah. like old, old school Star Wars stuff. Like you, you wouldn't think about it. Go to like the antique and kind of walk into there. It's kind of weird because you got a whole bunch of old school like it's like antique rose. So you walk into there, but they have uh, a lot. Of, every once in a while, you come across this booth that will have like old school Star Wars stuff. And uh, you talk to the, the, the booth owner, the guy who owns the booth, and sometimes they don't know how much it's worth. They're just kind of like, oh yeah, there's this. Like I, I got this. I'll give you an example. I bought this uh, twelve-inch vintage Boba Fett, Boba Fett, like a vintage twelve-inch one, which is a really wow. rare figure, and I paid twenty bucks for him. Whoa! And he's worth like he came out the very end of the line of the twelve vintage twelve-inch line, uh, and he's worth probably two three hundred bucks easy. Wow! Yeah. So you you can get some really good gold mines for sure. So I was like, I couldn't believe. It. I'm like, is this? Is this like a real? And I looked at the bottom. Of the, you look at the underneath the foot. There's a cop. There's always a stamp saying the year, you know? So it was like 1978. And it was like before Empire Strikes Back came out. What a do you, have the early, do you have the early bird set, John? Uh, no. I mean, I have the, like the Walmart one that came out six, uh, six, seven years ago. They did a remake oh, of it. But I didn't know if you had the original. The original one? Oh, dude. Like the telescoping Luke Skywalker. Oh, that's, that alone is worth like a ton of money. Well, but, that's what I'm asking. Yeah. All right. So here's a question for the forums, guys. And please continue to post questions on PetesGamerForum.com. There's a link on AllGenGamers.com, our website. And same with the audio questions. You can, you can email those to contact at AllGenGamers.com. Is that correct, Pete? Right, right email? Yep. Okay. So this question is from Charles, And he asks, here's a question for all of you. How has your life changed since getting a YouTube channel? Has creating a channel and interacting with others community given you a better understanding of the culture of gaming? I guess in Ben's your case, you can talk about the forums. Mm-hmm. Um, Johnny, we'll start with you. How is how has my life changed since I started doing a YouTube channel? Mm-hmm. You know, it sounds kind of funny. The only thing has changed; it's gotten a lot more busier. Like, mm-hmm. like honestly, like having when I first started the show, it was just kind of like something I did just did for you know I was casual about it because I didn't really have an audience. Now that I got so many people watching, I feel a, a, a lot more responsibility to make you know better videos i feel more more 
more is on me to make better videos. I, I feel uh, personally, and uh, I just find that I, it's encompassed my life that I never thought it would. But now it's like I, I have to you know, I have to answer so many people's questions, and I always try to answer so many people's questions. It's very difficult. Um, but it's gotten a lot busier. It takes up a lot of my life, a lot more than it was originally intended to be. Um, I remember before I like now I, I'm I'm doing the videos and I'm doing the Facebook pages and doing the podcast. We're all doing the podcast together now. And that just kind of takes away from, from gaming a lot. So I don't do as much gaming as I used to. It's, it's, it's kind of hard. Uh, but I still make the time. But that's, that's for me, my life has gotten busier. What, what about you, Pete? What do you think? Basically the same idea, just like times two. Because just like yeah. you, I started it up and it was just like a little side hobby. And I think I just got, it, it got too big too fast in a way because it's like, it's the point now where it's really hard to keep up with everything, you know, when I'm getting nearly a thousand comments on a single video, it's, it's kind of hard to keep up. Um, the most important thing is just to, to stay passionate about it. And that's why, you know, every once in a while you got to take sort of an indirect break. That's why when people, you know, there were times where I was going maybe a month without a video. Well, that was my form of a break. You know, I don't okay. force myself to put up videos. That's really important. You should never force yourself to make a video. Yeah. You, you got to do it when you're in the mood to put it out. Sure. Um, but it, it, do I have any regrets about starting up YouTube? No, like this is one of the most awesome things to happen to me. You know, it's really, who could have ever, I know I've said this before, but who could ever freaking imagine that you'd start up, you know, something like this and have thousands of people valuing your views on video games. And that was my original goal. You know, I wanted to all these years on the internet, I've been trying to find a way to somehow be heard, you know, have someone read your review. It's really hard. You know, you start off on game facts, you write reviews on there, or you go to forums and you talk about games, but it's never truly, it doesn't reach that audience that you always really wanted. And, uh, that's what YouTube really brought, you know, gives you the opportunity, you know, you make, you say something about a game, people will, actually listen to it which i think is really cool um and the fact that they write me and let me know that you know hey i really appreciate what you're doing on youtube it means a lot um but unfortunately you know i know me and you johnny have talked about this before we kind of we miss the days of having less subscribers because we yeah. were able to be more interactive with the viewers you know being able to talk to people and it's gotten to the point now where it's uh like i said too much to to manage it's way too much not enough like time the, 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 the facebook account uh, accounts alone i you know i created a facebook account so i could talk to people and have all that kind of fun i didn't think it would grow like it did i'm like oh my god and now now i come home from work every day and i got like 10 to 15 people have like posted on my wall and then send me private messages i go into youtube I got like 10 private messages there. People have written on the wall. Never, I can't even respond to all the people who, who comment on the videos. It's impossible to keep up. And then the podcast and the forums, it's, it's like, yeah, we did all this to have fun. And then it got so crazy. And uh, yeah, we, we wish that we could answer everybody's questions and all that. It's not possible. It's not that we think we're you know, too good for everybody to, to answer. It's just impossible. If you put yourselves in our situations uh, with thousands of people on YouTube watching us, it's hard to, re hard to respond. We wish we could, but, uh, that's one thing that's frustrated. Uh, me and Pete, we've talked about that. And, uh, I know gamester, same thing. I'm sure you could chime in here as well. Yeah. I well, can one one last ahead. thing I want to mention is don't forget. We don't do this for a living. Yeah. So it would be different if this is all we did for a living, but we have other jobs and people like yeah. me, I'm still going to college and, you know, we have a life and activities and other stuff and we still actually want to play games. Yeah. So I'll just end on that. Definitely. And I think I can speak for myself. And I think I can speak for, for all of us is when I say, uh, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. That's why we do it. Right. I mean, bottom line, it's a huge responsibility. And I think the, the more popular we get, the more scrutiny we get as well. People will judge us more. It seems like at least yeah. in later stages we get, at least for myself, uh, I've noticed some, some haters, <laughs> you know, and that that's just all part of the game. You know, I understand that. It's and it. it's kind of, the, I guess it's a form of flattery as well. If some people are, are kind of, uh, calling you out or whatnot. So that's kind of the way I look at it. Uh, but it's a lot of fun. I honestly, I wouldn't change it for the world. Uh, it is getting to be, um, a, a, a quite a task. Just re I, I respond to pretty much every personal message I can, I can, mm -hmm. I can get, uh, you know, so I just, uh, you know, cause I want to let people know, I appreciate them as subscribers, but like, I'll give you an example. Like the day before Christmas, I had like 50 PMs that one day. Uh, and I was, I finally sat down. I spent an hour and a half trying to just respond to them. 
Not only yeah. that, but just going to uh, my wall on my YouTube, responding to those people, reading my comments. Uh, I spent an hour and a half doing that. I'm finally like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad. And I go to my inbox, I have 20 more messages. News. I know. It's almost and like you feel you get on top of it, you answer everybody, you yeah. feel really good about it, and then it's all back the next day, and you're like, oh my God. Yeah. And if you don't stay on top of it, you it, it'll finish you. And if you notice, there's a lot of guys out there that don't respond or don't do anything like that. We really try to respond, but it's impossible. It's well, the really problem, getting hard. My problem is, you know, there's times where on the weekends, I'm simply not on my computer. I'm not really home because I work all day. I come home. I'm exhausted. Go to bed, wake up, go to work again, come home. And within those days, it piles up to, you know, it, it gets ridiculous. And I basically have to spend hours if I want to catch up sitting there you know, doing the PMs and the, the messages and everything. And I literally get a headache and it, it takes up almost an entire day. Sometimes, uh, like right now I'm backlogged. Um, it, it's going to take me a really long time to work through it, but it happens. Mm-hmm. And I think, I don't think, I hope people don't misunderstand what we're trying to say. At least what I'm trying to say. I'm not saying don't ever PM me, <laughs> you know, cause I, I, I enjoy the interaction, uh, between the viewers and, I've made one thing I'm really excited about YouTube here. I've made a lot of great friends here in the community. I mean, Definitely. you guys, uh, I really consider good friends. Uh, I've made a lot. I've met, you know, like I said earlier, I've met like 18 people in person that I really feel like I can, I can actually sit down and talk to and, and really carry a conversation that I've known for a while. Uh, so it is a really tight knit community. Uh, I don't think anyone's better than the other person. Nope. <laughs> you know, uh, we're all, we all started this channel with our channels with zero subscribers and we had to build. Exactly. You know? Like yeah. we don't think we don't have any egos having the amount of subscribers that we have. Nothing has changed. Mm-hmm. Like nothing has changed at all. It's not like, oh, I got twenty five thousand subscribers. Woohoo! Look at me. Who cares? It's nice that we all, we have a lot of people watching, but it's still the same passion that I had when I, you know, my big goal was to hit a thousand, and then I hit a thousand. I'm like, whoa! It still goes up. You know, I was kind of surprised at that, and uh, I didn't I didn't really realize what would happen. I was just having fun making videos it, and. Yeah. Filling the void uh, in some, you know, some aspects what I thought was on YouTube. People weren't talking about Guardian Heroes and Power Stone. I want to talk about it. And I didn't think I'd get more subscribers by that. You know what I mean? It's really strange. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. How about you, Jason? How's it changed you? Well, when I launched my channel a year ago this month, actually, I just wanted to bridge a few things. I wanted to bridge my passion for gaming, my talents with music and audio. And I wanted just to have fun doing something different that I felt wasn't really out there kind of wanted a place where someone could come and like learn about these games from our past and just have a good time with some comedy and high quality audio and video. And realistically, I've kept the same format this entire year. Nothing has changed other than all these people that I've met. And going back to what you guys have said, I've met some incredible people here and and everyone who takes part um, has just been wonderful. And um, I've made some great friendships. I've, I've been lucky. I've gotten involved with this podcast uh, you know, there's a lot of really cool things that have happened and, uh, just have all of you to thank. I'm, I'm, uh, real happy to be doing it. So to be honest with you, nothing has changed. Uh, I love talking yeah. and interacting to people and I, I'm fortunate I can, I can PM everyone back and I do PM everyone back uh, as it stands right now. So, um, I feel fortunate for that. And, you're you're uh, still in the good zone. You're what I actually count. Like, I think when I was at 5,000 subscribers was my happiest time on YouTube. Yeah. Cause I really, I'm, really I'm was. just under 4,000. Yeah. I could keep up with things and I felt really good and it was great. And then when I hit 10,000, I'm like, Oh boy, it's, it's getting faster. And then you, it goes up and it keeps getting faster mm-hmm. and all that. But well, I think the thing we all, we all definitely want to say is that we definitely thank all of our subscribers and all of you guys listening. Like without that, we really, we wouldn't have anything, you know, we wouldn't have an audience to talk to. And uh, we're really happy that people do listen to us and have a bit of fun with us that's all we're trying to do on youtube is have some fun yeah you know? exactly that, that's why we started that's what we do today you know it's about fun well, what do you think ben what are your yeah. experiences on the the forums there um well i mean my experience first and foremost is as a viewer and you know what everything that you guys have been doing has really contributed is it's made me aware that there is a gaming community out there i mean i don't i have a lot of friends in my circle right now but very few of them are actually gamers um i think me and my friend vito are the only two prolific gamers i know so it's actually connected me with a lot of people you know like i said from all different walks of life all different levels of interest all different levels of skill and it's just it's made more of a community feel to it even though i don't make youtube videos i still feel like i'm part of the youtube community and it's also greatly expanded my knowledge of gaming in general like especially the current generation you know i remember when i was first buying an 
Xbox 360, I looked on YouTube to see what some of the collections were and what some of the more recommended titles were. And Pete, your video was the first one, the Xbox 360 collection. And through that, I found, you know, you, Johnny, you, Gamester, you, Jason, and countless others. And it's just got me more involved and it's got me more, you know, I feel more a sense of belonging online because, you know, I can talk to people about gaming. We can game together online. I've got a lot of people on my Xbox Live and my PSN friends list. You know, it's definitely whetted my appetite for gaming discussion. And it's also opened my eyes to a lot of games that I wouldn't have otherwise heard of. I mean, you know, I never heard of Persona until I saw a YouTube video, you know, so as a viewer, it's definitely contributed greatly to it as the part of the forum. It's definitely given me more of an active role in it where, you know, I'm interacting with people and getting to know people with similar interests and, you know, taking part in kind of the nuts and bolts aspect of it, because it is a big forum and it is a big community. So being able to moderate that and being trusted to moderate that is also a big thing. So you know, definitely one thing I will say to all of you, and I know this is probably echoed by thousands of people out there who subscribe to your channels, but the work you do is appreciated. You know, don't listen to the people who bitch you out for not releasing a video for a month or, <laughs> you know, may, may question you about certain choices you make or certain tastes that you have. At the end of the day, it's your passion that sells you. So don't listen to them. What you do is greatly appreciated. Thanks. Well said. Thank well, yeah, very Sorry. nice. Mm -hmm. Welcome to another episode of Gaming Peace Theater with Gamester81. Gamester, what piece of gaming history are you going to share with us today? All right, Johnny, thank you for the wonderful intro as always. And today in Gaming Peace Theater, we have a question from Eric Olson on the forums, and he wants to know more about the Nintendo 64 DD. Are you guys familiar with the Nintendo 64 DD guys? Yes. Yes, I'm glad you, you picked this one. I saw this and I was like, yay, I hope he does it. Mm -hmm. So, okay, in case you guys are wondering, uh, the, yeah, the DD actually stands for disk drive. It also originally actually stand for, stood for dynamic drive. I actually prefer to call it double Ds because, or double D, because <laughs> I'm a big fan of double Ds. You know what I'm saying, guys? Hell so, yeah. Hell, hell yeah. yeah. Can I get an amen on that? Bye. Amen. 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 All right. No. So it came out in, uh, in Japan in December of 1999. But the interesting thing about the Nintendo 64 DD was it was actually announced by Nintendo four years earlier in 1995. Right, so there's a huge buildup for this thing. And it's actually, there are magnetic disks. There's 64 megabytes in of memory. You guys have never seen it before. It actually it hooks up on the bottom of your Nintendo 64. If you guys own a Nintendo 64, next time you guys take a look at it, flip it upside down, and you'll see a little, uh, like a, a place, you'll see a cartridge, you'll see a tab. You take it off, and that's where the Nintendo 64 actually attached. So it's kind of interesting that Nintendo designed the 64 with the, something like this in mind, right? Nintendo, when it came out, they, they knew it wasn't going to do very well, actually. And they, so what they did was they only made it available through Monday, like mail order. And the company could do it through was uh, called Ramnet. And Ramnet is a kind of mix. It was a recent company. It was called Recent and Nintendo. And they combined the name called Ramnet. It's basically an online service. So it was, it was actually it was really cool because you hook it up to your 64 and you could play games online, kind of very similar to Xbox Live today. It was for the 64. It was only available through Japan. So this the 64 DD was only available through the service. So it was very hard to find. Only 15,000 systems were ever sold. Uh, and it's interesting. I guess a few of them made it to the retail stores. But it's interesting that Nintendo kind of pulled the plug before it even came out, you know, really released. Because if Nintendo had confidence in this, they, they'd make it available in the stores, right? It was supposed to come out in the North America and, and in Europe. It never did. Uh, the 64 DD does work on North American Nintendo 64s. Uh, it, does, it doesn't have a, its own power supply. Actually, it runs off the 64, the system, which is kind of cool how they did that. So if you own a PAL, if you live in Europe, you own a PAL version, I wouldn't recommend hooking up a 64 DD to it because the voltages and stuff are off. You might fry it, to be honest with you. Uh, there's only nine games released for it. Most, a lot of them, about half of them, about four of them are Mario Artist games. Are you guys big fans of Mario Paint back in 16, uh, Super Nintendo days? I am. Okay. Mm -hmm. You guys would love the Mario Artist. It's really cool. They had uh, Talent Studio, Polygon Studio, Paint Studio, and Communication Kit. And you could do really cool things. You could uh, you make a movie on it. Kind of like, uh, It's basically like the sequel to Super Mario Paint, which is really neat. Uh, they had uh, Doshin the Giant, which is probably one of the more popular oh, I say that's games. A, yeah. Yeah, that was a cool one. F Zero X, an expansion to it, which is really cool. I know Jason, oh, you, yeah. Did, yeah, you, yeah. Did a, you did a video of that. Uh, here's here's the deal. I own I own the expansion, the the uh, FX or F Zero X expansion. However, I don't own a Nintendo sixty four Japanese system. And in order for that to work, you need the Japanese one to work, which is kind of a yeah. lame 
So I'm in the hunt for a 64 Japanese unit, and hopefully that will work. Uh, they had a golf game on it, and they had some other Jap- long, really r- long Japanese word game that I, I can't pronounce. I'll butcher if I do, but there were a lot of proposed games for it, actually. They were going to initially release... Uh, they're going to initially release uh, Zelda on it, uh, Zelda 64, which is. I remember, oh, I was hyped for that game. I remember me and Rob were really time. excited. Yeah. Because I you remember. know they talked about. Sorry, what they talked about back then was that you could shoot. And this just sounds so stupid to people now, but you would shoot an arrow into a tree. You could go halfway across the world, come back, and that arrow would still be there. That was a big deal back then. Mm-hmm. It was very exciting. Here. And the load times actually for the deaths are really quick. Actually, it's it's amazing how fast the load times are. And they're really cool looking, look like little, uh, like zip drive disc. Yeah, they look like zip discs. discs, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. Uh, they also were going to release a game called Zelda Gaiden, or Gaiden, and that was supposed to, that actually turned into be Majora's Mask, which is interesting. Uh, but they had Super Mario 64 2 that was supposed to come out for it. Never did. How awesome would that be, right? That would have been oh, amazing. God. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, so Super Mario RPG two was supposed to be a one as well. Oh, um, never, there was never. another. There's another really big one. Uh, Mother uh, was it? Was it Mother three was supposed to come out for that? Yeah, yeah. Mother three. Mother yeah. yeah. Mother three. And then Mother three point five. Like a, there's supposedly a. There is a, it exists a copy of that. If I'm if I'm right. No, I like you can't buy it or anything, but a copy did exist. Mm-hmm. Not of the finished game, just of uh, like a, almost like a demo game. But I remember this is all from memory. So. They had one that was Pamela Anderson, Double D, DD. Yeah, yeah, that was barbed a, wire. Yeah, I remember that barbed one. wire. That was <laughs> that was a good one. No, but the, so there's a lot of potential for it. The graphics are, are pretty much, for the most part, the same as the 64 system. It is kind of a holy grail to a lot of Nintendo collectors who are looking to get one. Uh, they are available every once in a while on like sites like eBay, but you look to spend uh, quite a bit of cash if you're looking to get one. So that is the Gaming Piece Theater with with myself. And if you guys, uh, please ask questions, post questions on the forums or suggestions of what you guys want me to review. I appreciate that. So, All right, guys. Well, we've come to the end of this wonderful content-filled podcast. Thanks again for listening. Make sure to go on iTunes and give us ratings. We appreciate that. Subscribe to us on iTunes if you wish. Visit us on the forums. You know, Mr. Uh, ben will be there hanging out with you, moderating. Ban you as soon as you join. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. I think we did this at the perfect time because his microphone's died. Yeah, his microphone is dead. Hey, can you hear me now? Not really. <laughs> well, thank God wait until the end, eh? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And don't forget about the contest. Keep those submissions coming for our awesome contest of the Endless Ocean 2, signed by all of us, Rob Mann. Possibly the whale, right? Possibly. If we can find him. You know where he's just Jason. You know he's in your room. You guys always jump into conclusions. Yeah. Um, what, what you guys just got to do is make a like a, a video of why you enjoy the show or one of your favorite episodes of All Gen Gamers and uh, put it as a video response in the All Gen Gamers Facebook group. And not on our personal uh, Facebooks, but on the All Gen Gamers one. And uh, yeah, we're going to go through. It's going to be tough. There's a lot of really good ones there right now. And uh yeah, just just leave a, a video response, and uh, whoever whoever we deem, you know, uh, like it was create the best video. They're all great. Uh, we'll win that copy uh, signed by everybody. I think that's really awesome. I think I'm gonna when it comes to me, I'm just gonna keep it. <laughs> I'm not gonna send it back to you. So I want to be the last person to get it. So that's- send that to him first, Pete. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Guys, I have a video of me having sex with it. Okay, TMI. TMI. <laughs> I love double D's. In double D's. <laughs> hey, um, Ben, it was fantastic having you on the show. You guys too. Sorry, can you, can you hear me now? Is this... No. Barely. Barely. Yeah. But... Okay. Well, I'll talk a little about it, but yes, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. You will just have to accept us saying thank you so much for being on, Ben. I accept. You're <laughs> <laughs> so. a great night, guys. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. 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 And we'll, we'll see you guys next time. Take care. Thanks, everybody, for listening.